beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed God is going somewhere with us as we travel around this nation strengthening the body of Christ and contributing our quota to the building of this army. I see how possible this prophecy is. Day in, day out, week in, week out. I see that the spirit of God is strong upon this nation. Hallelujah. And we will not fail him. Hallelujah. I assure you that the church will not fail because Christ himself will build the church. Hallelujah. So we spoke first and foremost about the prophecy. How that there is a prophecy upon the church. Many prophecies scattered in scripture. How that there will be an emergence of the body of Christ. And um, Micah chapter 4 talks about the mountain of the Lord being lifted above every other mountain. Obadiah 1.21 says, Saviors shall arise from Zion and they will judge the mount of Esau. Hallelujah. Revelation 10 begins to tell us how that the kingdoms of this world where this song is. I think that this should be the, the theme song for this, this series. Hallelujah. And so there is a prophecy upon the church. A prophecy that announces the emergence of the church and the inevitable doom of Babylon. Last week we considered Babylon, the concept of the Antichrist system. Please listen to me. I want you to pay attention to this series because it represents the foundation of what the church is alive for right now. There are certain messages that if a preacher is not preaching in this day and in this season, it is a sign that he is not in touch with spiritual reality. Hallelujah. The Bible says the sons of Issachar had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do. So we are not just bringing this as a... Can you help us? We are not just bringing this as a... A teaching just to keep time going it is very prophetic i want to do a quick recap on last week's message i'll try to be as simple because the goal is understanding not just to impress you with revelations i want us to understand this is the heart of the contention of the christian faith please let me have two people no don't worry pastor Femi, you can see now only two people one here one here God bless you. Hallelujah. The entire scope of the Christian experience is about the contention of two kingdoms, two governments, two entities. 
and humanity is the object of attention. On one side, there is a creator who is at the same time a king and a loving father who has manipulated history and has orchestrated eternity according to his predeterminate counsel. And there is a kingdom, a system, a government, an agenda, a strategy masterminded by this entity once called Lucifer. One who has made himself the arch enemy of the agenda of God. Are you following what I'm saying now? And humanity through civilization and as we have evolved as sociological beings have been shrouded from the reality that all there is to the existence of mankind as far as our dispensation is attempting to define is who truly owns the allegiance of mankind. Are you getting what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how many years you spend educating yourself. It doesn't matter any other thing you do. This is the prime, the apex of this. God committed all of his authority and his glory to one of these men so that through dominion and reproduction, the influence of his government will fill this territory of his kingdom. And by treason and deception, man, through the woman, handed the authority, the government, the authority to order and structure the earth to Satan, Lucifer. And on the strength of that authority, he has gone to cause havoc upon the nations. It is for this purpose that Jesus came. He didn't just come to take us to heaven. He didn't just come to birth a religion. He didn't just come to make us Christians. He came as a sacrifice. Part of the legal procedures that will bring back man and humanity to his original blueprint. And that happened at the expense of his blood. It happened at the expense of his glory. It happened at the expense of his life. Hallelujah. And then, in spite of the death of Christ, that has granted us access to now willfully declare our allegiance to his majesty through deception and witchcraft and manipulation of spiritual laws, and the working of evil upon the mindset of people, there is still a refusal from the kingdom of darkness to subscribe to what Christ has done. Although the price has been paid, although access has been given to us, but because he made us free moral agents, it will be unscriptural and against his character to impose his dominion upon us. So he gives us his spirit to explain to us the reality of his agenda. That by understanding his agenda, we will see that he's not just a dictator who wants the allegiance of humanity, but also a father who seeks to raise a family that can have a relationship. Hallelujah. And all through the years, the one gospel that hell has attacked most is the gospel of the kingdom. An unveiling of the blueprint of God's intention, the prophecy for the nations. An unveiling of this system that has masqueraded itself and evolved together with civilization. As we grew as mankind, the system grew with us. Hallelujah. And today, this system has, like an octopus, spread its influence across the strata of human existence. It has been the fabric of civilization. The ideas and the ideologies from this system has shaped our understanding of humanity. But there is still a cry. That the kingdoms of this world must become the kingdom of our God. For many reasons. 
Number one, because the earth is the Lord's. Number two, because the price has been paid. Number three, because God is sovereign and the almighty. These attributes of God are the factors that give us the impetus to contribute our quota to seeing this agenda come to pass. Listen to me. If you live your life never understanding that this is the summary of our Christian experience. An antichrist system, a system that was intentionally built and the purpose is to create a platform where rebellion against God will become an institution, not just an act. The same way corruption can be institutionalized. That's how this system of Babylon at the heart of the agenda of the Antichrist system is to build a structure where rebellion becomes an institution. That means it no longer, it becomes an unconscious act that mankind by default will walk in rebellion against the government of God. And listen, there is a prophecy. Babylon the Great, this system will fall. And I began to tell us last week, explaining to us the operation of this system, that the way this system works is that it keeps in itself all of the things that represent value for mankind. And then it will only ask you for one thing. Bow down to me and I will open the gates. Bow down to me and I will open the gates of marriage. Bow down to me and I will open the gates of politics and government. Bow down to me and I will open the gates of music and influence. And I reveal to us the reason why the media and especially the music industry is gaining ascendance is a spiritual law. Because every time the allegiance of a people would be declared to a king, music will precede it. Right? In Daniel chapter 2 and 3, when you begin to read what happened to the three Hebrew boys, it says when you begin to hear the pipe and the horns, the moment you begin to hear musical sounds, what will you do? Let the whole land bow down to a graven image. Notice, hold on, let me explain something. Do you see the strategy of Babylon? Nebuchadnezzar never said bow down to me. But he created an image of him. Are you getting my point? He created an image of himself and dropped it. And he said, don't worry. If I say bow down to me, it may look deceptive. So bow down to the image. I told you that the goal of Babylon is to bow down to any other thing aside from the Christ. So you may say, I'm not bowing to Satan. But whatever else you bow down to outside of the Christ is him including ministry including anointing as spiritual as they are the seat of the christian experience is not the anointing it's not ministry the seat of the christian experience is not even bible the seat of the christian experience is jesus the christ the son of the living god he is the object Everything revolves around him. Jesus at the center of it all. That's how it is done. Jesus at the center of it all. Listen. This antichrist system has built different statues and has placed it all around. Right? And so what happens is through witchcraft, and some level of intelligence that are superhuman. They seem to hoard the wealth of the world. And then they begin to manipulate policies that will compel men to bow to the dictates. The speakings of the beast. Are you getting what I'm saying? And today, listen to me. I bring you a very sad news. That a major part of humanity. Please don't stop the strings. Just play the strings. A major part of humanity 
are bowing down to Satan through many formats. Pastors are bowing down. Celebrities are bowing down. Students are bowing down. Workers are bowing down. So many people, poor people are bowing down. Wealthy people are bowing down. But because the system has masqueraded itself in secrecy, we do not really see the object of our allegiance. But the apostolic and the prophetic spirit comes to unveil the deception and reveal to the body that there is only one Lord. There is only one faith. There is only one baptism. This antichrist system has assumed different names, different bodies, different platforms, being deceived by themselves. Satan has, even among them, Satan has orchestrated deception. So that it looks like they are fighting themselves, but the truth is that they are all a team. Is the extent of the deception. And the name that that body will assume before the return of Christ is the new world order. A structure and a system that attempts to unify humanity under one umbrella. The question is what is the umbrella? Are you interested in what I'm saying tonight? I'm just doing a recap of last week's message. One umbrella. And so the United Nations now unites all of the nations and then the African Union. All of these are formations of the Tower of Babel. They are already the foundations of the rebuilding of that godless system. Genesis 11 replaying itself again. Listen. I want you to forgive me because I, I really would have played some documentaries. Hallelujah. I would have shown you documentaries where aliens what you call foreign bodies or whatever it is you want to use how they have assisted the technology of mankind until now some of the super intelligent inventions that have happened that we credit it to the wisdom of men was as a result of secret meetings and fraternities with demonic entities we will supply you a level of superior intelligence that will help to accelerate this agenda you will make money in the process but there is a deal and they never reveal the other side of the deal if i if i'm in a covenant with you the benefit is mutual we have seen what these demonic alien bodies have supplied to humanity but we have not seen what we pledge to them and it is happening fast now don't you ever say this does not concern you because very soon you will see how that the media and every aspect of human existence has been polluted and corrupted. It used to be in secret. But right now they have laid sufficient foundations. And according to their structure like the Titanic, they are convinced that it will not crash. So they are now coming in the open. We are the ones. We hold the power. We hold the authority. We hold your daily bread. We hold the keys to your relevance. We can shut your universities and open them when we want to. We can shut the doors of wealth if we want to. We can declare war in a nation if we want to. You are seeing the formation of the Antichrist government. You better listen to this because you have confessed all your life that you will not die. The meaning of that is you will be alive. As you are right now. You will see that formation. But the parts they do not understand is that there is an army. Hmm. I'm telling you, every time I say this, I feel excited. There is an army. See, do you know how many centuries it took for Satan to build this system to this level of sophistication? There were times when the body of Christ, the church of God in the earth, was so strong they would not even allow an iota of the antichrist system what the devil did was to sacrifice that generation and go for the ones to come are you getting my point he waited decades 
for the generation of the fathers that truly had reverence what he did was he led them through deception to be so occupied with ministry and revivals that they never paid attention to the generation coming are you getting what i'm saying so they were busy doing what they believed to be kingdom advancement and the devil started bringing messages that made them believe that jesus would come in their time so they felt there was no need to raise the younger generation because after all right what i'm telling you is something that happened in the maybe 30s 40s they said jesus would come certain heretic teachings started mixing up with revivals and they said jesus is coming there's no need teaching the younger generation and so at a point there was a period and a dispensation of time where the precepts of god was not handed over to the generation and then there were others that came in the 60s and 70s god's generals as we know and yet the devil kept quiet what he did was he started attacking those who are now the presidents of the nations he started following them when they were children when others said they are young just leave them what will they know and the devil said let's make this a 60 70 80 100 year project and all the reverends who serve god died and they buried them right all the mothers who will not hear a child say stupid or something they will beat his mouth american or no american the devil said let's be patient we can't stop them but they can they will die so let's be patient until they die look at me satan can be patient he can wait for a whole generation to pass while the this generation right now that are perpetuating how old are they most of the people who are the envoys of darkness especially in the music ministry <laughs> sorry in music what music industry they are not up to 30. i hope you know that it was a secret thing right now there are shows where people come and identify celebrities from childhood is that so that's the strategy of the devil they identify them talent horns if you are not talented you are not needed in the rebuilding of babylon see that so you come and sing and, and you sing as if you are talking they shift you one side and they find the bright ones and then they give them some money and their broke parents say go we believe in what god is doing through you and now they sign contracts and they say look you are a machine if we did not tell you know it now you are not a human being you are a machine what does a machine do perfect obedience you own it it remains until you off it it does not off by its initiative we will give you money we will put you on the scene so that you will use your influence to attract others but behind the scene you have sold your soul are you getting what i'm saying now and when the devil realized that there were men and women of God who were noticing that something was wrong, he quickly manipulated the economy so that poverty becomes a serious issue and then they stop looking and they say, okay, let's handle this issue and taught them wrong principles so that they will use the entire lifetime looking for money and not turn and say something is wrong. There must be a correction. Are you getting what I'm saying? everybody say babylon the antichrist system will fall say one more time babylon the antichrist system will fall this is the reason why somebody will go for a meeting abroad and come back and just look at your god-fearing mother and orchestrate a scandal that has no head and tail and fire them from the company immediately they are fired somebody comes in and now he says now we are the top members of the cabinet we represent the future of this company and we pledge our allegiance to the same deity right gradually jesus was taken out of media they still left god not if you if you bring in jesus there is trouble they knew that if they take jesus god you can leave angels, you can leave God, you can leave seraphs and cherubims. They removed Jesus, the center of everything. Later on, they started attacking God, right? And then when 
the grace message began to be exaggerated they leverage on the exaggeration to remove the ten commandments they say after all you hear what you are saying you don't need it let's get it out but it was not about the object as it is about the person that was choking darkness notice this they never said don't stop serving jesus they started taking away emblems and things that represented the presence of the christ in a territory listen there is a reason why things are documented archaeology is a spiritual thing it's not there is men will lose touch with reality if there are no structures and monuments to remind them these things are not they are not some you know this is the exaggeration now, of course i believe in the the message of grace don't get me wrong but i'm saying benihin and and and, and sidrot calls it the hyper grace message when it is pushed out of the boundary right there are monuments that have choked the design of this antichrist system certain emblems of the spirit upon currencies upon lands churches that were built where revivals happen every time you want to build an antichrist system when you see these monuments they they represent the presence of god in territories and right now they are breaking them down in the name of excavations in the name of westernizations they are breaking they are cutting humanity away from the history of godliness right they have manipulated laws such that if you have a child like this our dear lady right now she can decide to tell her mother that she wants to get married this baby and if you take her to court be sure you will lose because that's the kind of agenda they want in two days they would have set up a website stop oppressing children.com right and they manipulate a news a demonic nigerian mother violates the human rights of her daughter the antichrist system is hungry for scandals a man of god does something now i'm not i'm not endorsing scandals but something happened maybe he fell you know into all kinds of things and they just they just magnify it they use his worst picture right they use a nice watch like i'm wearing now and say the ones who eat our money and sleep with our ladies caption run down the ministry and do everything they think it's a perpetuation of civilization but what is happening hear me what is happening behind the scene is an advancement of the antichrist system because a day will come they will now start probing into sunday and say based on what do believers gather on sunday right gradually they won't attack it now it's too early they will build foundations and one day they will now say no church will operate until they are licensed by the government and they will set question and answer for men of god based on theology oh yes oh yes it will happen and say you must be certified by the state to be a preacher is that true and you must be registered with the government and the government will pay you your salary and what that means is according to the way you dance to their dictates notice oh please just pay attention uh, this is a background we have not started today's teaching i want to land this series with something heavy this night hallelujah then they will give pastors uniform if it's not blue and black suit you cannot preach so that if i am poor and i cannot afford a thousand dollars versace what does that mean the message will not pass. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then they will now reduce our service time to 45 minutes. Because they have, they have interpreted the church as a nuisance to society. The average American will tell you the church is a nuisance. They will say all they are doing is raising money. And then in the fear of that, churches have become welfare organizations just to validate the offerings that have been given and so a pastor comes and says we are revealing the love of jesus we are caring for the hurting look let me tell you straight to the point without ambiguity caring for the poor and the fatherless is part of the nature of god and is incorporated as part of the gospel 
But if that is what we think is kingdom advancement, we are joking. Notice that all the ministries, especially outside of this country, whose agenda is all about caring for the poor and hurting, receive an applause from people. They say, yes, just stay there. Nothing more, no controversial teachings, care for the poor. And then you see one godless man partners with them and says, I'm giving you a million dollars, feed the hungry and all of that. You think that's what God asks us to come and do here? Just come and keep feeding hungry people? You see that? I'm showing you Babylon masquerading itself. And so they say, you're a pastor, 10,000 members, we feed the hungry, our church is open, once you're hungry, just make your way. Jesus died. After all, what are the offerings for? Now, look, let me tell you. Fear has made a lot of men of God to dance to these things. But it's a corruption of the strategy. It is still Babylon. Babylon is making such bold advancements. Right? Bold advancements. Look at musics that are being played. And in those musics, Jesus is acted as a slave. There are all kinds of... And they act, they act music and they put crown and mock Jesus. And people buy the albums. They sell millions per day. But you raise a song and the company you want to promote you, they will buy it and run you down and sell it back to another. Look, let me tell you, church, I want you to wake up. There is a call. There is a need. For someone to go and take the land. We have the call and we see the need. We don't feel strong enough for this. But the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of the Lord. So take us, break us, make us. Release us, we're ready to go. We are ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to go. Sing one time with me. I'm ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to go. Say anything and do anything that attacks this government and the first thing they will do to you is to try to stamp you down. But if they find out that you are operating by, an, a, by a principle that is higher than their wisdom, the next strategy is to negotiate with you. They say, after all, we are not enemies. It's just different sides of God. Why fight? It is true we all believe in Jesus. But the question is, as what? As what? I can believe in Sam. But as what? It's not just to believe in Jesus. There is something about him you must believe. So you see, the world is saying, no, no, no. Come on, you guys are fighting. We all believe in Jesus. But the question is, as what? Because they want you to settle and say, we are all believers. We are family. Hold my hands. We are one. Right? One big family. The sun just exploded and vomited all of us. It's just that we are, we are so old, we don't know ourselves. So we are one big family. I need you to survive. The question I have for you is we all believe in Jesus as what? Right now, even preachers cannot say Jesus because it's offensive. So they say God. Exactly, they are walking based on the mapping of Babylon. Because it's easy to turn God into anything. God is a bottle of minerals to some people. Fanta, right? God is a beautiful lady to somebody. God is a fish. I have a picture um, on my system. A woman that lay down with her sweetheart. Sardine. Sardine. Fish. Fish. Sardine. Right? Lay down. No, I have it. The woman lay down. 
in such atmosphere of love and romance and the fish was there lying down that can be god and you have no right a system has been created that you have no right to probe it are you getting me very soon they will teach our children that there is no male and female so a child of seven years will see you and say good afternoon ma if you don't answer they will take you to court because they will now say what is the basis of male and female are you getting what i'm saying <laughs> behold the emergence of babylon we are distracted trying to be mogs we are distracted building ministries and cathedrals and babylon is flourishing effortlessly but in the name of jesus there is only one resistance to this agenda it is called the ecclesia god's apostolic and prophetic strategy and tonight very briefly i'm going to be unveiling to us what the church really is what our mission is in the earth and the strategy for the execution of this project god bless you guys please sit down write this word down ecclesia E double K L E S I A. E double K L E S I A. Ecclesia. The first mention of this word, theologically speaking, is in Matthew 16, verse 18, when Jesus says, um, Upon this rock I will build my ecclesia. Right? I will build my church. I will build I will not contract it I will build my church and it says the gates of hell shall not prevail that means I will build it and put in it resistant components such that no matter the assault of the gates of hell it will not prevail say amen so the church was designed to succeed and it will not fail in the name of Jesus Christ the church is not just a congregation of people watch this the church is not just koinonia one ministry this ministry led by a general overseer or superintendent or priest or or apostle or prophet or whatever it is no no that's not the scope of the understanding of the church the first understanding of the church i want you to have is that the church is god's strategy for kingdom advancement the church is god's strategy it is a strategy not just a people it's a formula the church the ecclesia is a spiritual strategy god himself designed that strategy he died to raise that church that ecclesia that will judge the powers of darkness that will restore the ordinances of the kingdom are you getting what i'm saying everybody say the church number two the church is an institution the only institution in the earth where the agenda the blueprint and the strategy for kingdom advancement is supposed to be taught understood explained the church is an institution the only institution commissioned by god himself as the center for kingdom advancement the prophetic and apostolic platform where men are made to understand the precepts of the kingdom where the history of the dealings of god with man where his blueprint where the speakings of god to the nations will come about through are you getting blessed and then number three the church is also the name given to the people the congregation the individuals 
who will carry out this agenda this mandate this assignment of kingdom advance so the church is a strategy the church is an institution and the church is the collection of the people if you do not understand this about church you're going to church on sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday is only religion right now we go to churches we go to church on sunday on friday on wednesday all kinds of activities yet the average believer in nigeria does not even know why the church is there the church is a strategy say after me this church is a strategy the church is an institution the church represents a people god's own people the body of christ the battle acts that he will use to terrorize the gates of hell it's very very important jeremiah 51 verse 20 tells us he said thou he was speaking about the church the church is my battle axe like a man going for war and he holds the tool that he will use to fight and god says the church is the tool i am holding you are my battle axe you are my weapons of war i will use you to break in pieces this system I will use you to crumble this system this godless antichrist system listen our generation will not be the first to crumble the antichrist system it has been crumbled again through history so don't you say it's impossible remember in the days of noah what happened god used a family as a type of the church noah right he created he revealed a strategy through that man they became an institution that brought the animals to safety and judgment was declared and babylon fell is that true we see again elijah the tishbite alongside the seven thousand prophets under the custody of obadiah right how that they judged the altars of darkness they slew all the prophets of Baal. fire came from heaven and consumed it is that true and there have been many other instances of the victory of the church so i want you to know that the church was designed to win the only difference is that our generation will culminate the last victory that will usher the king let our king be lifted up oh, son. this is the song uh, we will lift up the king like a trophy our generation will do it at the end of all things we will look at ourselves and say jesus you be lifted high higher above un above the african union by a system that has not yet been revealed jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher just sing it one time jesus you be lifted higher That's the prophecy that is upon our generation listen that is the prophecy that is upon every single one of us whether you realize it or not our generation will return the king of kings we will prove to babylon that jesus lives we will sing those songs of victory at the end when all this is done the bible tells us Babylon the great is falling. The kings will stand as they watch this city born in one hour. It will be a speedy walk by the church. The kings will watch their wife Jezebel in ashes as the church begins to sing the songs of victory. We will exit out of this earth 
as a victorious church. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are not living as some fearful people saying, ah, thank God. No, no, no. Not just people who they have slaughtered here and there with the sword and we say we survive. Uh -uh. There will be a flawless contention of the church. It will happen for a very short time. And then we will hear that trumpet. Our king, the captain of this army. He will appear. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. And our tears and all our sorrows will be no more. We will sing with the host of heaven and cry, Holy is the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. This is what will happen. This is what will happen. But before it happens, we have a strategy. The church, the ecclesia, is a strategy. It's an institution and is a people. Oh, I see this countless times in the vision of the Lord. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Yeah. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. Break every chain. Listen. Judges chapter 6. Don't turn there. An angel appears to a weak man called Gideon. And says, oh thou mighty man of fellow. And Gideon says, no, don't call me a mighty man. Babylon has taken over. The Midianites have invaded the system. I am the least, the last born. And even in my father's tribe, I am. He said, don't worry. I am not looking for your strategy. There is a plan. Just be available. While that was happening, the Midianites were enjoying the show. There was no way they would have imagined that Gideon and 300 men will bring justice. But Gideon, he said, if you claim the revival is coming, where is the anointing? Where is the mantle that our fathers had? Because they had something that made them do what they did. Right now, don't talk to me, please. When Beyonce and Jay-Z and all of these people are invading the systems. When right now, you must bow down directly. Right? When all the godless people are the billionaires in the world. Leave me alone. That was a type of our generation. And the angel called him by the future, not the past. He called a man who was hiding like the church. Hiding so that they will not criticize me. Hiding so that my church will grow. Hiding so that I will attract money from government. But the angel said, Oh thou mighty man of fellow. Hmm. One time, a little boy ran in from the wilderness to bring food for his brothers. And he saw a beast roaring called Goliath of God. And the Israelites were chickening out. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? There's an army ha, rising up. It has happened before. There's an army rising Listen, when Gideon mobilized the army, just like God is using us to mobilize an army, everybody was shouting, but some were still afraid. They were wondering, will it happen? And at a point, God said, Kai, I want to do mighty things. There's so much unbelief. Separate them. Use water. The word. Let me see their response to the word to separate them. Those who give priority and address the word in a certain posture, may they qualify to lead the team. Only 300 men were found. And God said, Gideon, you are small. But do you believe that I can go with you? And Gideon said, let's go. Kingdoms. Rising against kingdoms. You will see small men. You will see ordinary men. 
with an anointing that has never been seen with an unction that has never been seen with a dimension of wealth that has never been seen it will happen the church is rising i told you the church is a strategy and part of the things that will be given that church is the hidden wisdom of god the bible says that we speak this wisdom in a mystery it's not just tongues there is a strategy the reason why it will not be revealed now is because we are not ready when an army is ready are you following me now joshua was angry and sad moses had died and in joshua chapter one he was oh thank god his name is joshua mm. standing before 2.5 million people full of fear and unbelief a fortified city called jericho and the lord said don't mind what you are seeing while we look not at the things that are seen don't mind it it looks too solid but there is a strategy i told you the church is a strategy it's not that the church has it the church itself is a strategy and the lord called joshua and said moses my servant is dead he said as i was with moses with the same anointing as i was with smith wigglesworth as i was with maria woodward eater with the same mantle the same unction i will be with you he said only be thou strong and of good courage only be thou strong i'm sure the israelites were in their camps just talking and saying this young guy he brought us here to kill us and i can imagine angels moving around jericho saying in seven days in seven days what you see as solid as it is made from concrete and granite will become history because through faith we understand that the things that exist are held by an immaterial force and when that force is manipulated the things that are real will crumble our concept of reality has been altered this looks solid but by the word of the lord it will disintegrate as if it never existed hallelujah and then joshua encouraged the people said stand strong and then when they were ready the lord said joshua come let me reveal to you the strategy here is the strategy for conquering babylon in that dispensation you will do stupid things this is the strategy gather the priest where are the worshipers let them lead and let me have the trumpets and the ancient instruments of worship they may not make sense he didn't say get a knife right he didn't say go for war he said you don't worry they would have said uh -uh, our fathers went through the red sea he said no i have different types of strategy there are times i can tell you stand still there are other times i can say go around the mountain seven times it doesn't matter what strategy just know that there is always a strategy for every dispensation are you following what i'm saying now they went round, and i'm sure the people in jericho were just looking and laughing five chariots could stand on the fence of jericho meaning even if it falls it becomes another fence and while they were moving with all kinds of fear having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete and on the seventh day in all kinds of fear god called joshua again and he said son this day i will exalt you among the people this day all that you have said will come to pass and joshua said we will go around seven times and at the seventh time the strategy is called tehillah it's a mystery shout it's a shout where the instruments and the voices of men coincide it activates a lord these men do not know in the spirit and at the seventh time that apostle stood and said shout and as they shouted makapora tatayaba i'm sure those people were surprised when the earth opened up it was a sound that caused the earth to open up and it swallowed that fence except the partition of rahab in one hour jericho that great city that made a boast against the god of israel in one hour babylon is falling listen if you do not know god your heart will fail 
to ever think a revival will come upon the earth because Babylon is a noisy system it makes noise they have insulted the church of the Lord Jesus Christ did you hear what they said when they fired the missile to Israel they said their God caused a wind to blow the missile Manda Balakataya you fire a missile a mystery wind shifts it from a nation to the sea that's a foretaste of the present power of the kingdom man that act has kept the nation in silence for a while you fire a missile well targeted with superior technology in the air brothers and sisters the israelites were just moving around and say you don't know abraham that's why you are doing this nonsense you don't know our father you don't know the covenant upon which we are standing and brothers and sisters the same wind that blew the red sea i'm telling you what has happened in our day a wind blew it away there is a strategy it is they that know their god that shall be strong if you don't know your god you will be weak those witches and wizards will look at your family let me bring it down and look at you and vow pray and fast they will tell you nothing will rise but when you get the strategy you will see how cheap he is don't you think your prayer and coming maybe if i'm talking of nations nations there does not just mean america and the rest your territory look at the speakings of the beast in our homes a herbalist gets up and tells you i killed your father are you hearing me and i'm going to do the same thing and he goes back to sleep you are crying because there is no strategy let god give you what will make that man not sleep pharaoh 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 himself that wizard called pharaoh he refused to let israel go and god said that's right you touch my son i touch your son and he killed his firstborn the very future of israel of Egypt listen do you know why Egypt prospered Egypt prospered because of a blessed man called Joseph the moment he died they forgot the God and the blessing and the covenant that brought them into that state and when he said let my people go it was hunger that brought them to Egypt right hunger is still bringing men to Egypt it was hunger and famine that brought them to become slaves Is God speaking to us? The Lord revealed to me certain things and I'll just share two of them and then we'll pray. What is kingdom advancement? Let me teach you tonight what kingdom advancement is. Many times we collect offering in church and say, Lord, let this be used for the advancement of your kingdom. And the preacher who is saying it does not even understand what he's saying. What does it mean to advance the kingdom? Number one, kingdom advancement involves submitting to the person of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 2 from verse 37 to 38. When Peter preached, they said, men and brethren, what should we do? He says, repent. Right? And believe. Okay, I thought it's projected. That scripture. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ repent listen there is no kingdom advancement when a person does not submit notice my choice of words i didn't say match out and say lord jesus lord jesus i confess you i confess you no 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 kingdom advancement is when you submit you submit your entire life it's not enough for jesus to become savior he must become lord and he must become king these dimensions must be experienced it says believe every one of you in the name of jesus christ look let me tell you we have a seeker friendly generation that is very ashamed of letting people know that the heart of the christian experience is not just repenting and coming for an altar call and you say in five years i've saved two million people to what degree have they submitted to Jesus Christ? Not God, not God, not God. Jesus, the son of the living God. I believe in God. I believe in God. I believe in a bottle of minerals. 
I believe in one idol. No, it's not just God. Jesus, the Christ, not the footballer, not the actor in Mexico. Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God. It is important that the beginning of the structure of your Christian experience, how many people do we have in our churches? We have never probed into the sincerity of their decision to submit to the government of God. There are elders in church, right? Deacons, pastors, bishops, apostles who obviously do not submit to the government of Christ. They have verbalized, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, forgive my sins. But their life, they have not taken advantage of the grace and the substitutionary work of Christ and the grace that it supplies. The centurion said, for I am a man under authority. Kingdom advancement, hear me. First, starts in your life when you submit to the lordship of Jesus in totality. Our Christianity is not rich because we have declared but we have not submitted that's the revelation behind the baptism comes from the word baptizo it means to be partially or totally immersed in a fluid such that you look at the man and you cannot see him again only the fluid that he's in is a type of being baptized into the authority the name and the government of the christ say amen listen this is very important this is the beginning the foundation don't confuse this this is the foundation of kingdom advancement submitting to Jesus Christ not God Jesus the Christ the son of the living God Jesus son of God I believe in Sing it one more time. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Say after me, I believe in Jesus. Say it, I believe in Jesus. I believe he is the Son of the living God. I believe he is my Lord. I believe he's my savior. Listen. When you go back this week, I want you to examine not just that you believe in Jesus, but what you believe about him. Don't let seeker friendly messages just tell you just believe in him. Right? Jesus, or you say, God, I love you. Help me to love you. Help me to feed the hungry. Help me to greet prisoners. That's not salvation. You are not born again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Charity is not the pathway to salvation. It is good. We do it as a ministry. Hallelujah. Number two. Kingdom advancement involves bringing nations and territories to submit to Jesus Christ. Bringing nations and territories to submit to Jesus Christ and subscribe to his principles. So that experience that has happened to you, submission to the person, not just the principles, the person. There are people who have submitted to the principles of Jesus Christ. They are getting rich by it. They are being saved by it. There are unbelievers who don't love Jesus, but they tight. They connect to the law of seed time and harvest, and the heavens are opening. They are rich, but they are going to hell. You must bring nations to submit first to the person before the principles. Never ignore introducing men to that person, not just as a cruel king, but as a savior as lord as king jesus said no man comes to the father except through me he said i am the way not one of them definite article i am the 
way. So all of that gospel of universalism, many ways to Jesus, many ways to the Father, right? No. It says, the sheep, or how did he put it? It enters through the door, right? I am the door. Every other man is a window. Listen. Part of the call of the ecclesia is by the agency of the spirit to compel nations, hear me, not to feed the hungry. That's not our priority. It is part of the package but it is not our priority. If no one has told you, Joshua Selman is telling you tonight, listen to me, that kingdom, the core of kingdom advancement is bringing nations and territories, not just to the government of heaven, introducing them to the person of Christ. That word government can be deceptive because someone can be among the people of God, tight like them, Speak like them, but not know their God. Right? Christianity brings you into a relationship. We want those nations to experience that there is a God who is not just an idol to be bowed to alone, but a loving person that can be experienced. This is what the fathers lived and they died for. They brought a generation into an encounter, not a man. Ah, I was studying about the Welch Revival and I, I watched, I watched a, a documentary on it and all through while the documentary was playing tears were coming down from my eyes I saw the picture of that man Evan Roberts a man who was mightily empowered of the spirit He did. men will read about the revival in newspapers and from the newspaper an anointing will break out Railway factory workers, people who fetch coal to put, right? People who were miners, they started prayer meetings. The fire of God broke out in all these mining places. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening And everyone Who calls on Jesus They will be saved Can we sing it just one time? There's gonna be There will be a great awakening Pioneered by Nigeria Pioneered by Africa, a revelation of the person of the Christ to the nations. There's gonna be and everyone. Yesterday we were in Joss. I went to minister in a meeting called the Feast of Incense. And there were all kinds of people there. You know, um, some of the armor bearers of Prophet Chuck Pierce. Many of you may know him. Chuck Pierce, one of the notable prophets around the world. And some of the people came. There were a number of people. Um, Apostle Pearl Coupe, a number of great seasoned men and women of God. And I came, I shared. After I shared for 30 minutes, the moment I was done, one of the armor bearers of Chuck Pierce, they were there and they asked me not to go. And he came and they took a mantle, Chuck Pierce's own very mantle, and they brought it and they began to prophesy. The things that the Lord was showing them about me and the revivals that would come. I'm not talking about myself. I'm just using this as, and they were all there, we were there together. And while they began to prophesy and speak, Hallelujah. I stood there listening to them and I knew that this was God is transferring mantles from region to region. And after everything, they just gave me the mantle. They said, it's yours. Go with it. Yesterday in the night, I took it out and I said, Lord, what is this? What, what is the meaning of this? Because I know that 
this is not just about a man carrying a mantle what what does that mean and then the lord began to reveal to me that this is part of the strategy of the revival that is coming lord pour out your spirit on all the people of the earth let your sons and daughters speak your words of prophecy send us dreams and visions reveal the secrets of your heart oh hallelujah Lord, our faith is rising. Let creation see the coming of your name. There's gonna be a great awakening. It will happen in our lifetime. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening And everyone They will be saved In eight days from now The election of Nigeria will start for some of us, we have watched it like a movie. It's not for me to come and broadcast things, but we have seen it. Ah! There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening so the prosperity the anointing the influence the phd and all of these things they are all tools that are supposed to put you in a position where you should introduce your sphere to the person of Christ and to his principles. Look up. Let me balance an erroneous teaching about kingdom advancement. Have you heard of the teaching of takeover? Now let me balance it. Because I want you to know that what many preachers have preached called takeover is not what will happen. That is not what God is building right now is the spiritual dimension of his kingdom. This earth and this heaven will pass away. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Kingdom advancement is not the day when railways start working in Nigeria. Right? And all of a sudden we build skyscrapers and we say, my goodness, this is the glory. That's not how it's going to happen. Our generation will not be the ones to bring that. That dimension of the operation of the kingdom will happen when Christ himself returns with his church and his feet touches the mount of Jerusalem. The center of the earth. He will reign for a thousand years in glory and majesty and during that time there will be a demonstration of peace as has never been seen. Listen to me. If your ambition about kingdom advancement is to make every Nigerian own a car. Let me tell you the truth. Go and just go to Forbes Business School and after that join them in the crash of Babylon. That's not the ambition. The ambition is to build the formation of the person of Christ in individuals and nations first. Of course, if the person of Christ is embraced and his principles are adopted territorially, the earth will begin to respond to the excellency of those principles. 
but I want you to know that the focus of God right now upon the nations is to introduce the person of the Christ to individuals, to territories, and to nations. So, the seeker-friendly message of just going to buy toys for children, right? And then we give them toys and never tell them anything about Jesus. And as we give them toys, we kiss them. Mwah, mwah, mwah. All of them. They are going to hell if we do not present the person of Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether Guarantee Trust Bank partners with Eternity Network International to do a business sensitization exercise and help people who are suffering financially. Thank God for those initiatives. But my brother, if it does not culminate into a direct revelation and submission of the Christ, it is part of Babylon. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, many of you are shocked now because I've insulted your ambition about what you call kingdom takeover. So there are many gullible people. They are saying, oh, hallelujah, a time will come to pass when everybody in Nigeria will be driving a BMW. If that is the revelation you got, that was divination. Not the spirit of the Christ. The formation of kingdom advancement is spiritual. Everybody says spiritual. That's why we need miracles and signs and wonders. That's why we need the operation of the anointing. That's why we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Because for now, when his person is revealed to the nations to authorize his coming, because Jesus will not return when opportunity has not given to the nations to hear his voice and to willfully choose whether or otherwise they will subscribe to his government. He said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all nations after that the end will come say amen. amen so listen to me if god makes you a businessman you are an envoy there to present the christ first and then his principles it doesn't matter in which order they come the most important thing is that eventually the ideology of the christ listen this issue of trying to blend into society with diplomacy. There is a level of your pursuit for God that diplomacy can no longer hold. Are you getting what I'm saying? It does not mean that you are in a corporate gathering, a business gathering, and you begin to express some kinds of fanatism. No, there is wisdom. But I'm telling you that eventually, the core of your ideology and belief must be let out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I believe in Jesus. I believe him as the son of God. And we will use everything as a tool. When we build the schools, it is because we are building Christ. Right? Very important. If all you do is build orphanage, almost every lady wants to build charity organization. The question I have is, do you just want to feed the hungry or give them the bread of life? We have many charity organizations with all kinds of people there. And Jesus is never presented to them. And the people come and we clap for them. We say, Madam so 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 and so, a humble woman. This is 15 years of active charity. She's a human activist. This is the trophy they give her. All of that is nonsense. It's still Babylon. If Christ is not at the center of our activity, I'm telling you without any ambiguity, you are part of the building of Babylon. So I desire to be a multi-billionaire. Why? Because kingdom advancement is capital intensive. Are you getting what I'm saying? It will require a dimension of funding that is selfless to be able to bring that agenda. So for the sake of thy house, I will desire your prosperity. If I want the anointing, the reason is so that the nations can see the manifestation of the glory of God in miracles and signs and wonders. When the eyes of the blind are open and the deaf hear and all kinds of things happen, the glory of Jesus is revealed to the nations to the end that his person will be embraced. Hallelujah. This is the assignment of the church to bring the nations to the lordship of Jesus Christ. To bring the nations, not just by sharing tracts and what we call evangelism, 
Because that strategy, I'm sorry to tell you, to a large extent will not bring a serious harvest. There is one strategy that the church has, has got to use and it's called influence. Influence. One word. Influence. Influence in wealth. Influence in grace. Influence in government. Listen to me. Don't you let anybody tell you that you should not build a bank just because you are a Christian. Build it. Build it. If it is in the name of the Lord, it will be a tool. Don't let anybody tell you the anointing is not useful for kingdom advancement. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus himself is going to be lifted and glorified through our lives. I've told the Lord that for as long as I live, directly without any ambition Jesus will be glorified in my life hallelujah this is why I live this is why I move this is why I have my breath. I don't have so many plans every plan I ever bring is my contribution to seeing his kingdom come that's what you should call purpose right so what is your purpose to be great for what Say so everybody in my family has, has refused to rise up. Me, I will break that chain. Yes, we want the chains broken, but to what effect? Just to prove a point that your father was a failure, your mother was a failure. No, sir. Jesus, you believed it higher. That's why we do all that we do. Higher. Believed it higher. Jesus, you believe that I am in my life, Lord. I am believe that I That means if come, these two ladies, come and hold my hands. If these ladies are beautiful and your beauty does not directly reflect the Christ. Let me tell you, you are building Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you are beautiful, listen, listen. I'm showing you that everything, okay, everything around your life must lead to exalting Jesus the Christ. A guy looks at you and says, ah, you are beautiful. And then he says, you are just laughing. Instead of you to remember immediately, I'm an envoy. I'm an ambassador. How can I take advantage of this opportunity? I'm not saying follow him home and say Joshua Selma and say go and preach. And, and land in trouble and it, it backfires on you. That's not what we're saying. But we're saying that are you that passionate? Somebody brings out a bribe and says take. <laughs> and you hold the money and say I appreciate this. But I want you to know that there is an agenda. I am an agent of the advancement of this agenda. This is five million. Mr. Man, take your money. <laughs> Some of you are looking at me and say, lie, lie. That part, that part of the deal will happen later, not now that I need money. That's why you won't get it. That's why you may not get it because God has seen your heart. Do you love God that much? Do you love God that much? Sisters, have you not seen that it was the beauty of Hadassah, Esther, that brought the salvation of the Jews. Have you not seen that a woman's beauty acted in an apostolic and a prophetic office? Have you not seen that the strength of a man called Samson brought grace? Have you not seen that the wisdom of a man called Bezalel helped in the building of the temple? What do you have that has not submitted to this agenda tonight? You must submit it. What do you have? Lord, I love you. But my job is for my stomach. My commitment in church. I'm a sanctuary keeper in the church. That's enough for you. But when it comes to this job, it's for me to chop. It must come under the government of Christ tonight. We're going to pray. Bless you. To yours, to yours, oh Lord. To yours, to yours, 
Oh Lord. I went for a meeting and a very beautiful phone was given to me. People give me all kinds of gifts. And um, I remember last year when I met my elder sister, I told her about all the phones that come and how I really don't need them. I give people and my sister I said, What is all that one? You know, you know, ladies, kingdom advance, eh, kingdom but ah, let's let the people enjoy as it's passing. You know, and so a phone was given to me, I think it was last week or over the weekend, and then I just I just felt like blessing my sister with it, my younger sister now. And I gave her the phone and she was very happy. And I said, How many people will die to hold this phone? It was a gift. But because we have an affinity to it, say, Ah, Lord, I won't let it go, not for nothing. If you buy it, yes. If you have that kind of attitude, you will never get the anointing, you will never get prosperity, you will never get grace. God will only give you what you can give Him back. When you become a distribution channel and you say, Lord, let me be your treasurer upon the earth, you will see wealth that you cannot account for. I'm teaching you ancient secrets. God is looking for treasurers, men who will be custodians of the wealth of the kingdom. God is looking for men who he will deposit his glory and his anointing and his mantle upon them. But the problem is that what is meant for the building of the kingdom becomes our personal property. There is absolutely nothing in my life that I will lose sleep for this night. Nothing. That it left and I don't sleep. What? No. Have you come to that point in your life? Please listen to me. I'm just charging us so that we'll pray. Have you come to the point in your life where if that shirt is missing, you will fast for seven days and say it must come it is mine it was given to me right there's a film i recommended for us to watch some time ago lord of the rings right see that guy what's his name that ugly thing that creature it died with what it wanted together babylon is falling it held it even in death that ring he wanted it so badly he died with it that's what happens to anybody who loves things there are people who love power oh god i want anointing you are fasted but the reason is not for the building of his kingdom the building is so that you will get an anointing some want prosperity so that when you see poor people you just come and say see this watch i hope you are aware that uh, god can bless people where are you even from if that is your concept of prosperity it will be far from you tied your life Nothing will change. To yours. To yours. Koinonia, hear me. Tonight, you must come to that point where you realize that everything in your life must respond to this agenda. This is the mystery of long life. Not just confessing. There is a way you're all. I want to marry. To what degree will your marriage see to it that his kingdom is built? That's why Hannah never got a child. She went to Shiloh crying. Lord, Penina is mocking me. And God said, it's too small a reason. And when Hannah changed her motive, she said, oh Lord, you need a prophet to judge Israel. Let my womb carry that prophet. That prophet will directly support you. She didn't pray twice. Once and the answer came. There are many of us. Until you tell God. What that marriage will be. Lord a rich man. Hey, a rich man. God says I don't have a problem. But how is it going to influence the kingdom? Because I told you. The gates will never open until you declare your allegiance. Lord, I want to be a CEO. Give me multi-millions. And God says, I don't have a problem. To what degree? I say, Lord, I don't like that one. When we get to the bridge, we'll cross it. God says, you are joking. You are talking to the all-wise God who sees your heart before you start. The secret 
to receiving the investments of the spirit in our lives is total surrender i surrender i surrender i want to know you more i want to know you more i surrender i surrender lord i want to know you more i want to know listen lose affinity for things i'm telling you this tonight lose affinity for things let there be nothing in your life that you cannot give god sister if that brother is an idol i vow to you god will take him not because he hates you but his jealousy will fight anything that is not him in your life there is nothing in my life today that i cannot give god nothing money grace if God tells me this is the last koinonia service, we will never have koinonia again. I love him that much. I'm showing you the secrets of grace. Don't just say there is an emergence. Not everybody will be featured in that army. The hallmark of that army is death. Death. God can give you a chip today of 20 million and say, son, sell it and let the money go and in five minutes you have called the dealer come and pick it with joy in your heart and brother may god give you a wife that will not stop you from obeying god there are some there are some sisters sisters let me talk to you if you allow your affinity for things to stop the man that god gives you god comes and says sow this seed and the wife says honey see but the way this your thing i will leave you and all of a sudden the man says god no i'm this my wife is going to leave me i look forward to a generation where a husband and a wife can take their eyes he can give and they will hold their hands and cry but they'll say i surrender mm. i surrender the way that brother is desperate about marrying you he can't give anything to god he loves you the moment he started asking you out he followed you to koinonia for three weeks the day you said no you never saw him again that's what he will do to you when he marries you because when men want you they do everything rose of sharon right lily of the valley but let me tell you you must show men the difference between them and the christ in your life my father can go my mother can go anything can go for his majesty i want to know you more. this is how god brought me to the place of the anointing i don't know how others are getting their own but i tell you the anointing will never come to your life until you die at that point your voice will become like that of the sons of thunder you will speak and nations will hear because you are speaking from the fountain of death something has happened to you the life that i now live i live by the faith of the son of god for i am a man under authority and on the strength of that authority i can tell sickness go and it will go i can tell the nations go it's not just some loss um, there is a circumcision happening to you church god is looking for an army but it's not enough to be available you must be usable and part of being usable is to die i believe that there are before the end of this year there are multi-millionaires that will rise from this place the lord showed me from the beginning of the year but this is not just money mongers buying cars to say ah poverty has whipped me now is my time to revenge if that is your agenda you are not in the list i guarantee you there are strange levels of anointings that will come but these are men who will stand and while the nation is applauding them like Lecrae sang they will be like a trailing star and pointing and saying I'm not ashamed there is one mightier than I there is one mightier than I 
I'm just a representative. You watch an emergence of this army. They are not just preachers. They are apostolic businessmen. They are apostolic musicians. Ministers with fire and grace. They will arise like an infant of fire. Nothing able to stop them. But the Lord is asking you tonight. As we round up this series of the emergence. Do you see yourself as being part of this army? Listen. For some of you. Your family's cry and fasting for years. Is dependent on your commitment. It's not because God has stopped raising Deborah's. It's because many ladies have entered into carnality and flesh. That fire and that passion. It irritates me when I come in the midst of people and you don't hear them talking about God. I know we are human beings. I'm a young man. Come on now. Your passion must transcend the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It takes a passion. If you don't talk about men, will you die? Must it always just be about men? Brother, is it always about women or money? Can't it be Jesus? Can't it be the Christ? Can't it be his agenda? There is too much noise in our soul. There's too much noise of ambition. Because we have been taught that Jesus makes men fail. But he says, seek you first. Pursue it with your all. I was not looking for ministry. If I was looking for ministry by now, I would have been part of many struggling and insulting others. But I was looking for him. I still am pressing with all my heart because that which I've seen is only a tip of the iceberg. I know he's more than this. And let me tell you, thank God for the lifting. Thank God for the names they call me. But there is one desire that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. This is my bread. This is my cry. I don't pray and say, God, give me tea and bread. At this level, I'm not doing ministry to find food to eat. Let me tell you, I know what the blessing of God is, but it has not changed me. If you want God to use you, you need to suspend some lusts and desires and begin to press him. Are you hearing me? Press for God. It's not you that created marriage. God created it. He can give you a husband and a wife. Oh, look at the motivations that drive us to church. Breakthrough. I must get there. You hold your file. I'm, I'm not against all of that. But I'm just saying it has become an obsession. A man comes and he sits in front hoping that the man of God will see his file. Stand up and say, man of God, this is a business. And the man talking is not poor. He's lost. It's an affinity. May God bring back the days when congregations will come and all they will do is to worship God and say, Lord, reveal your glory. We are that generation that will stand at the gates of prophecy and keep knocking until that door open. May God bring ladies who men will call you uncommon, but your conversations are spiritual. I know you want love. God is not against it. I know you want a husband. The fastest way is to love him. Pour your all like a drink offering and stop killing yourself. Young people now catch hypertension, right? It used to be sickness for old people. But right now, young people, a man of God starts a ministry. In two years, he's having hypertension because he wants 1,000 members. Where did he keep his fire and love for God? We must return that fire. It's all I seek for. I'm not looking for anything. My God is faithful. Listen, there are three serious prayer points we are going to pray. There are some of you standing outside. So many people, I want you to cry. Three quick prayer points and then we'll pray for Nigeria. Hallelujah. You are going to cry and say, Lord, I make up my mind to be part of this emergence. Go ahead and pray. Whatever position you want to take, lift your voice and begin to pray. Please pray from your heart. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, 
Jesus It's all about you It's not about me It's all about you Jesus Yes it's all about you It's all about you Pray from your heart it's all about Let this be a prayer of consecration it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I consecrate myself unto you. I consecrate myself afresh. I will be part of that army that will present the Christ to the nations. I give you my beauty take it as a drink offering I give you my intelligence take it as a drink offering I give you my education take it as a drink offering I give you my financial acumen take it as a drink offering I give you my business take it as a drink offering I give you my ministry my influence Allah will turn your life around. Allah will that for five years you didn't get a job now even if you get a job now you will still suffer because for that five years many things you are probably in debt and many other things have gone down so you don't just need a job you need God to do something in your life and in and through that job when you get a job with a triple promotion now it's not about the promotion if you just clap for the promotion you did not discern the miracle it's a message i am a restorer of time are you getting it now you've heard me say humorously that when a woman who has been pregnant for who has been barren for say eight nine ten years even if that woman puts to bed and intends as a couple to have four or five children, they will have to add an extra 10 or 15 years to their life to space the children well. But when God gives that woman triplets, that is nine years of three, three years spacing in nine months. That's a letter from God to creation. I'm still on the throne. Regardless, I am still on the throne. So many times, God will allow Satan to just exhaust his pride on earth. And when he is done, God will say, are you done now? Let me show you that there is no such thing as yesterday and tomorrow in my economy. I'm not just motivating you. That he said, when the Lord turn again, the captivity of Zion, the captivity of Zion, I saw you yesterday you were a beggar but I see you tomorrow you have experience there are two ways to climb a tower you use the ladder or you use a lift you will arrive the problem is you may die before you get to one place you will climb and by the third or fourth floor you are there but there is a technology hidden somewhere where you can stand and you are moving by the energy of that lift and within a minute you are there and with honor you can step out they were like them that dream lord i i thought i would have been grateful if you did it slowly the fact that you are doing it but that you chose to move this far that when i started this year my collective goal was to reach here and in one month you gave me five years goal this is the god of heaven if God answers you like a man, why will you praise him? God will never do things the way men do them. No. Listen, I am a man. 
and with all humility it is within my power to be able to use influence or resources to just upgrade someone's life if God upgrades you the same way I'm doing it then it means we are colleagues the jealousy of God makes him to be spectacular there is a signature that only his hand can sign so that you are that's why he told Moses say listen 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 Moses leave all of this don't mix me in the many gods in Egypt I am that I am and I will have to do something that distinguishes me he does it so that no man will ever claim credit for it there are things that is difficult to say God did it you just say God did it because um, you don't want to look like a stupid person you are in the midst of intelligent people and the obvious is to say God did it but there are really things that everybody knows that this one is God's doing this is what God wants to do tonight if all you get is a job men can do that you don't have to be a Christian to get jobs you just need to understand the laws of life but that there is something that God can do show me a man that restores time show me a man that restores time when time is gone is gone no but not in God's economy time is like a chess he can take it forward and backward listen you see ba i tell you why god does not hurry for many years he gives men speed but god does not hurry and you have to be god to understand why he does not hurry it does not make sense to hurry when you have this kind of authority you only hurry because of something that can overpower you are we together now if i have a bank and i'm hurrying up and you say apostle hurry up five o'clock they will lock the bank i said don't worry so he said see i know i saw the face of that man. he will lock the bank it's my bank so the time was only supposed to be for you when any time i come the bank opens listen listen very carefully so when you say god show up otherwise men with god say it doesn't make any difference I've checked for the reasons why I should hurry and I didn't find it. There is nothing that can put me under pressure to hurry. I am God. Ah. He comes in his majesty and sometimes he allows the pride of men to just continue while they speak. God just comes and says, what did men say? And they will say that there is no rising in this family that the first person built a house at 45 and God says if I use the man who is 30 years old they would think he went to school let me use the mama that does not see I would do something with her and she would dedicate her house in two months this is God for you God is not interested in any miracle that will not allow the message of his glory to be written on it there are times that when you bring challenges to God is an insult so he allows it to go deep enough to be worth his power you don't bring to him what men can solve you will confuse who solved it because while you were speaking to him you spoke to men too so that you don't mix the answer and just say ah. every time God wants to arise even the sorcerers will not see that day he would do something that makes everyone give up and then he will now say clear the way for me ah. This is God for you. Listen. My prayer is that after this meeting, eh, listen, you not only will receive miracles, but you begin to covet your life being a sign and a wonder. Don't just be a recipient of God's benevolence, but that you are like a canvas. When there are some paintings, when you see artists draw, you just ask, what was in the mind of this? Let God reveal to you what his mind can do. I don't like ordinary things in my life. I like things in my life that come with a statement. This is God. And someone will look at you and not even know how to smile again. He says, this thing, eh? it has to be God. He will just go back and say, Lord, I'm sorry for being foolish. You see, he has repented without your sermon. Your life was a sermon. They limited God in the wilderness. Listen, let me tell you this. Don't get used to pain. 
don't get used to pain there is an ability from heaven that can crush the gates of darkness I know we are human beings and many times when things become increasingly uncomfortable we build a theology around them to say it should continue but this night roll away the stone and let the God of heaven come in and show you that with men it is impossible but with God all things all things are possible every time I pray for the miracle service I don't pray for too many things I don't pray God heal the sick cast out devils no that's not my prayer Lord let there be something sign a signature upon someone's life upon someone's family you know I was spending a little time with my family in the afternoon and while we're talking about this my sister was speaking and said that um, that it looks like this miracle service God is visiting families not just individuals he just wants to move past individuals remember I told you you are not free when your family is not free let me tell you sincerely he said as for me and my house if the, jo the brothers of Joseph all had dreams nobody would kill anybody it was because only one over how many had dreams and the rest said you are joking you saw the sun the moon and 11 stars bow But when everybody rises by the finger of God, then it is a testimony. I don't know who has said what about your life and about your family, but give God a few minutes tonight to answer them. God has an answer. My brothers and my sisters, the God we serve is not man. Don't get used to it. God is not a president of a ministry. God is not the CEO of a bank. God is not the CMD of a hospital. God is not a monarch on earth waiting to die for someone. No. He sits in the circles of the heaven by himself and manipulates all things according to the counsel of his will. You will do yourself harm tonight to sit down believing it will happen just as before. Come with your vessels increased and enlarged. Lord, I know you are stepping in. I know you are changing my life. It's June, but people have laughed at me. Where is the extraordinary fruitfulness? I'm still begging. I don't even have 250,000 to pay rent. My prayer life has gone down. Ha! This God of heaven. My brothers and my sisters, it doesn't take time. When God opens his mouth from heaven, anything plus anything plus God is the answer he says should be. Your weakness plus God is whatever answer he says to be. Your limitation plus God is whatever answer he will be. I continue to pray and I say, Lord, let this ministry remain not just a place of signs and wonders, but a sign and a wonder itself. If you are looking for a sermon and you don't have data, just think about koinonia. And there is sermon is you are, you are seeing a marvelous God listen by the grace of God within the time God has given us we will we will disprove the pride of men in this world all of those mundane rules that have been put by the arrogance of men that they claim even God should honor God has sent us to disprove them that whoever told you that you have to build a house from salary whoever told you you have to feed your children from pension whoever told you that it will take 20 years to know God whoever told you that your ministry must increase 10 members per week there is a generation that will answer the arrogance of men please don't get used to the natural cause of things there is an advantage God programmed in the journey of the believer what I call systems of advantage. His mercy is a system of advantage. His favor is a system of advantage. It cannot happen to you the way it happens to men. Don't get used to it. I don't expect my life to be ordinary. I expect something spectacular. Every day like a soup opera, there is an episode of signs and wonders. Listen. 
that people can look at your life and say, let's watch God, what God will do this week because there has to be a message. It's impossible for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and there is no message. No, you are not a sign and a wonder. You have what it takes to do signs and wonders but God wants you to be the sign yourself. To be like that star that shines in the east that when men look at you they say what manner of God is this men whom the earth was not worthy of see there is nothing the devil can do about this no there is a kind of speed that God can bring to your life regardless of who loves you or who does not love you it doesn't play any role God just sits upon you with his jealousy and decides to make a statement. Let me tell you, fearful is the man that God decides to use as a canvas to write a statement. You will look for their downfall, wasting your time. They will just continue to rise, held by the jealousy of God himself. Are we together now? Please sit down. God can choose to love Jacob. God can choose to honor Jabez. God can choose to lift Rahab. God can choose to turn the story of Ruth around. God can choose to cause Abraham to be the father of nations. He is God. Who should he consult with? Where is the parliament that must accredit him? Listen, we live in a proud world where men sit down and make it look like I am the reason for your lifting. If you ignore me, you will die. And while it is true that men are pipes, we have 7.2 billion of them. That's enough variety for God to choose. No single man can get up in arrogance and pocket your destiny. No. I'm shaking off fear and unbelief from you so that when we begin to minister you don't just stand some of you may have written some things in your prayer request and left others because you have convinced yourself that God cannot go that far my brothers and sisters what does God need to do in your life again for you to believe that he is mighty hallelujah I told the Lord something. I said, Lord, let my life be a sign and a wonder. A testament of what you can do with a man that loves you. Much more than celebrating a man like you did. It is, it is the celebration of God and the possibilities that he can birth on earth. That my life will not limit God. No way. I like the things men say cannot be done. If it is God that says it cannot be done, I will not even try it because it's a waste of time. But if it's man that says it cannot be done, I say, God, what do you say? Ah. When Jesus came, he said, you say this in your law, but this is what I say. You say this in your law, but this is what I say. Like he's speaking to someone. They said this in your family, but this is what I say. He can veto anything and turn a man's life around hallelujah someone gave me a very humorous testimony i think it was yesterday they had been trying to pursue something that has to do with the dad and um uh, you know i think the dad is, is is in the force or something and they are just deprived that man for five years i think if i'm if i'm not mistaken no salary no benefits because some ammunitions were missing and they traced to to him imagine a breadwinner of a family for about five years things went down and you know if, if he wins the case they will have to restore everything plus damages are we together and they kept manipulating manipulating and i think just yesterday i was told that was it yesterday or i think this week the verdict came out and came out in the father's favor i said you should start dancing in your household because whether the devil likes it or not 
Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. Things never get missing. They only leave you. They are still on earth. Everything that leaves a man does not go out of the earth realm. It is only within a distance that is beyond your reach. There is a force from heaven that sustains an ability to call the things that be not and draw them. There is a force of attraction. I prophesied as I was commanded. It says, and the bones, they were all there. Just because you cannot see them does not mean they are not there. Everything you are looking for is looking for you too. And there is a force that can connect you to them. Please listen, I'm not just motivating you. The things that we have heard, the things we have seen, the things that our hands have handled. That who is he that saith a thing and it comes to pass? That God did not vet it and approve it? Let God be true and let every man, including your situation, be a liar. Listen to me. Please hear me. A miracle service is not just the time to pray for the sick. Not everybody is sick. You see the level of high blood pressure disturbing young people now? You see people talking like fools on the road. Someone in early 20s talking to himself, moving around. This our road from here to Abuja, almost every day someone is dying. Nobody leaves his house to die. Worry. Pastors collapse on stage. I've told you that there is a technology that sends Israel to Egypt. It's called hunger. Every time there is hunger, Israel must go to Egypt to find bread. Genesis 42. Please give it to us. Let's just read it. I apologize. The projection is not very clear, but just see that scripture. Now, everyone read. If you can see it, we're reading one and two. Ready? Read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was what? Corn. Where? In Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. This is a prophet. But lack of corn was making him mortgage his children. Go to Egypt. I'm a prophet but we're about to die. And I hear that wherever there is corn, that's where people go to. Look, let's not lie to ourselves. Wherever there is corn, that is where people go to, including a prophet. He had, because the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all, and that even the king is fed from it. When there is corn in Egypt, believers will have to go down there. We need time to serve the Lord. We need time to bear the revival that he wants to bring. We need time to pursue the purposes of the kingdom. But that time cannot be given to you when you spend your life looking for corn in Egypt. It's a cost to go down to Egypt. But if that is the only place that has corn, then you will have to go down to eat. And then there arose another Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. And the people of God got into servitude and slavery. Don't mind the ignorant people who say it doesn't matter. You just serve God like that. According as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Everyone say after me, life, life. godliness. Life, life, godliness. There are things that pertain unto godliness. Your character, your work with God, your prayer life, your spiritual development. Those are things that pertain unto godliness. But there are things that pertain unto life. Your children's school fees, your accommodation, the well-being. That any man who is unable to cater for his family, according to scripture, has denied the faith. 
and is worse than an infidel. So when the devil wants to discourage you as a man of God, you're preparing a sermon and here comes your son with a PTA letter. And your eyes, the letter is usually typed, except where the money will be. They write it with biro and the price is doubled. You stand there wanting to kill your son. Why has the school fees been doubled? And the child said, they just gave me to give you. And you look at it. Your salary is not increased. Nothing else is increased. But the bills are rising. The devil wants to send you to Egypt. A time will come what, what you would not do yesterday, you will now do tomorrow on the strength of the pain. Hunger can take men to Egypt. Hallelujah. A dear man of God called me, I think two weeks or so. I don't know him so much. And from one of these nations. And he called me and was lamenting. He said, Apostle, pray for me. Our ministry is under serious financial attack. He said, right now, honestly, the way things are, we may not even be able to hold our service because the bills, you know, things are going down economically and the givings of the people also seem to have followed and you know i got angry in my spirit i said this is the kind of news satan wants because you see very soon the devil will bring one rich man who will pocket that ministry because of one million or one five or ten million or whatever it is that he gives you will lose your voice lose your relevance lose your integrity on the platter of hunger was it not hunger that made Esau to sell his birthright? Only an irresponsible ministry will not address the issue of hunger that is going on. There are many things to address, but hunger should be one of them. Believers are hungry. They need a technology that is higher than what has been proposed. Let me tell you, there is a path which no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. There are dimensions reserved for these times when God will bring out as a display of his intelligence. Do you not know that the strategy of saving 20% was God's intelligence? It's not just an economic strategy. There is always a reservoir in God's intelligence. For times when people cry, when the saints cry, God will say, show them that the wisdom of God is inexhaustible. Health care is one of the devourers in our world today. Do you know how much it takes to treat people? Once your son is sick, you are crying already because you know. How much does it take? We have so many doctors here. One of our doctors came and I asked him to check a woman. And when he brought the list for the x-ray, I said, I will buy that machine. No. As, as I said, <laughs> and open an x-ray, an x-ray place. I mean, how much? Not the whole body. I don't know what part of the body it was. But when I saw the bills, I said for x-ray. And almost every day, someone has to go there. If you are collecting 50,000 naira and you use 30,000 for x-ray, there is no reason why that child will give you joy. Are we together? Anything that child does will annoy you. And then help that child. Let him not take first or second or third. You will almost kill the child. There are real issues that we cannot laugh at. Real issues. And this night, God is determined to rise up and not only step in, but turn things around. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Thank you. John chapter 10 and verse 10, please. It says, the thief cometh not. There is a name Satan is called. And here he is called the thief. Are we together? If someone knocks your gate and you say, who is that? He said, the thief. You don't need to ask him what tribe, what gender. You will call the police immediately and say, there is a thief. There is an armed robber in front of my house. And Jesus is preaching here. And he says, the thief cometh not. That means you will never see him around. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So everywhere you see stealing, killing and destruction. Is a signature the thief satan he comes into a joyful family are we together happy husband come my dear happy wife 
when the thief comes in between them he must scatter everything one flimsy excuse or the other he will come in between business partners and shred them when satan passes a place you know this is him he will leave his signature stealing killing destruction we would be in trouble if jesus stopped there but he says i am come hmm. he didn't say i have come i am has come to bring life and that you have that life more abundantly lavishly I am come that ye may have life. I am come that ye may have solutions. I have come to show you that there is a way out of this. I am come to show you that there are possibilities. Are we together now? Now the last thing I want to say before we begin to pray. I will continue to teach this because repetition is the key to persuasion. The Bible says according as his divine power. Please give it to us. That second first. Um, second Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 please grace and peace verse 2 be multiplied unto you at through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord verse 3 it says according as his divine power hath given us so what gives us in this kingdom his divine power never forget this it is not faith faith is a channel that allows his divine power to pass the agency the force that is responsible for connecting us with spiritual possibilities is his divine power for many years there has been an argument about the workings of faith and the anointing there is no argument there are we together faith is the pipe that the power of god flows to to carry supernatural solutions to you if there is no faith there is no channel of the power from the throne room to your situation it will not be possible you don't choose faith or the power of God. That's not a theology taught in the Bible. He never taught any of them in isolation. His divine power. Every request on your list will be solved by his divine power. Now let me teach you this. I've taught you again. What is on you is what controls the results around you. Please never forget this. The results around you do not fabricate themselves. The results around you are mirrors. They are a reflection of the kind, the level, the dimension of the grace that is upon you. So I can know the grace on you by looking at the possibilities in your life. I can know what grace has come upon you by looking at what changes. It is impossible to increase in grace and your possibilities remain the same. No. The testimonies that recycle around your life are an attest. They, are, they attest to the fact that this is the level and the extent of grace. Hear me. Every door can open. It just depends on the grace asking it to open. Everybody is a giver. It depends on the grace that asks them to give. Someone can refuse to bless you and yet carry a millionaire and meet someone else and say give me the privilege of blessing you nobody's really stingy the problem is that these possibilities don't happen in the earth dimension they are realities that are finished in the realm of the heavens and only executed the earth is a realm of execution the same way your body is The anointing and the grace on your life is what controls the possibilities around you. Please listen to me. His divine power. There are doors that have refused to open. The doors are not stubborn. The doors are only obedient to the last instruction. And since the anointing speaking to it is not that high, the door will remain obedient to the last instruction. The day a higher authority speaks, that door will open, I assure you. Please don't generalize challenges. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. This is a message of hope for you to hear. Challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them. Even the king could not solve the hunger problem of Samaria. Here comes the prophet. He did not come to solve the problem. 
He said, oh, okay, I see that there is a situation. Everyone was hungry except the king and the prophet. He said, by this time tomorrow. And then a foolish man said, even if God will open the window of heaven, how will these things be? And he says, you will see it, but you will not partake of it. I believe in the power of God. I've seen what the power of God can do. Stop wasting your time trying to change things physically. Creation has never been disobedient. Creation is the most obedient entity you can find. The money you are looking for is not disobedient. There is an unction that calls it. If it's not there, it is authorized to leave you. Creation is obedient. When Noah was ready to open the ark, when he opened the ark, there was a grace that came on every animal by themselves. The Bible never said Noah went to the wilderness to chase them. Animals with no higher intelligence, they found their way to the ark. If animals can find their way to the ark, why should your destiny helper find it difficult to find you? Why should breakthrough find it difficult to... Noah just stood there and allowed the grace to walk. You rest only when the grace walks. Let me tell you, life is hard when you are walking on your own. In this kingdom, we don't walk with our hands. Our hands only help us to receive the grace. When it comes, you enter your Sabbath. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The power of God is the spiritual mechanism responsible. The signs and wonders that will happen in this place right now, the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs, they will happen according as his divine power. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. The information is not that he was anointed. Look at the extent to which he was anointed. With the Holy Ghost and with power. It says he went about doing good. And healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. There are people inside. There are people outside. There are people standing. In such sacrifice. Waiting for God. It will be very wicked to share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and tell everybody bye-bye. Return back with your challenge. No, I want you to believe God tonight and insist. Lord, whatever will come upon me must come upon me. Whatever must change must change. Whatever must grow must grow. Whatever must die must die. When there is no expectation, it becomes wrong for God to visit you. Because one of the things that he gave men, seven benefits given to man at creation, one of it is the right to choose. The will that God gave man is a fundamental right. It's not for Christians. Once you are a man, you were given the right to choose. Salvation, even at the detriment of your going to hell, was left for your choice. God will never, never, never violate your right to choose. I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. I can only advise you choose life. I said before you prosperity and poverty. I said before you success and failure. I said before you spiritual growth and, and a low level of spirituality. It's up to you to choose. I choose life oh, and everything that comes with it. I choose speed. I choose increase. I choose honor. I choose dignity. I choose open doors. I choose open heavens. It's a choice. And if you're a family man here, as for you and your house, you can't choose for the whole world, but you can choose for your house. That the favor of God can rest upon your life tonight. And that within the next one month, things will shift in your life in a way and a manner that will surprise you. If you do not believe these things exist, you are not a Christian. A Christian is not just one who is born again. A Christian is one who has submitted to the ideologies of the kingdom as the ultimate value system of your life. Hallelujah. I'd like you to believe God. Don't say I've come for miracle service before. You see, let me tell you the truth. My assignment as a man of God is not to invite you. 
my assignment as a man of God is to continue to grow in grace so that the things that would not answer to me in January must answer in June otherwise what is the superiority of growth if the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now I'm only maintaining my spiritual level I'm not growing there was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles they went to Jesus asking a question and they said why couldn't we do this he said this kind there is a technology for taking this one out see let me tell you sincerely there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes there is enough grace to turn the tables around the anointing works like money I've taught you it can only solve the problems that are lower than it the anointing does not generically solve every problem no no you have to understand this it's very important to know I have let me just still five ten minutes to explain this look at this this is 1,000 Naira look at this and if I give you this 1,000 Naira it can buy a bottle of water is that true it can even buy you lunch or dinner depending on where you eat but this cannot buy you a car this cannot pay a child's school fees but it is still money so if you want to pay a child's school fees, you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand. Every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it. Not every grace solves every problem. If every grace solves every problem, then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace. Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost again. To what end? It says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles, signs and wonders be wrought in the name of your holy son. There was a dimension of grace requiring a higher level of the anointing. Gehazi carried his rod, the rod of Elisha and he came and laid it on the dead body. The body did not rise. But when the prophet came, that dead body came back to life. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. I know men of God have prayed for you. They are not fake just because you did not get the result. It is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace. And God grants the privilege of grace. And that's why as men of God we must continue to grow in grace. So that what we could not solve yesterday, we can now solve tomorrow. That is the proof of grace. Are we together now? We are going to pray tonight. It's going to be a very quick walk in this place. I trust God and I believe that in the name of the Lord, that things will so change in your life, it will surprise you. Please rise up on your feet. Lift your voice and begin to mention specifics. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Rise up on your feet and please pray. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Yeah Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah my life around turn my life around tonight turn my ministry around turn my family around is someone praying turn things around shalabarata <laughs> katos
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to be very fast. I minister by the Spirit. And the goal is for God to solve people's problems and deal with all the issues that are not of God. Praise the Lord. It will be very, very fast. I'm not sure I may have the time to prophesy tonight because I want us to finish very fast. Our time is gone. But let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven. Please don't be used to your situation. If you're a visitor here and you came, come insisting that I did not leave where I left to be here only to return back with stories. Uh-uh. That is not the God that we serve. Are we together? Hallelujah. There are three people. The power of God is coming on outside. Overflow one. Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. Please, let's start very quickly. We're going to pray. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. A very strong anointing. Please bring them very quickly and then, and then we'll pray. And then we'll pray. When you have them, please bring them very quickly. The Lord is already moving. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I want you to believe, believe that God will step in and turn your life around. Hallelujah. Turn your life around. From the back, right to the center, I'm seeing the power of God come on someone now. From the back, right to the center. From the back, right to the center. Please bring them out right now. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. An end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An angel of the Lord is still standing here. I'm still seeing this road. Right now, it's like smoke just moving across. Right now, from the top to the back. Please bring them out. An end comes. God is stepping in to locate people by His Spirit. Remember the Bible says, Now the Lord is that Spirit. And it says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I command every oppression of darkness. I want to pray now. I see fire in this place. This is what I'm seeing. By the spirit of the... And listen. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. That every spirit that is other than the spirit of the Christ. Responsible for any challenge and any predicament. It must let you go now inside and outside online are you ready father let there be deliverance right now one two three shout jesus jesus i cause every power bring them out right now every oppression of darkness it must go now it must go now oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh 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 Please bring them out quickly I'm still praying The Lord is showing me a vision of a padlock in the spirit I'm seeing a padlock and I'm seeing what looks like a key about to open it at the count of three again you're going to shout that name I see opening opening doors that have been closed are you ready now one two three be open now every closed door be open now be open now be open now, now. close doors over families Close doors over ministries. Close doors over destinies. 
I decree and declare be open be open now bring them out please be open now be open now in the name of Jesus overflow one two three across the road online be free now hallelujah I'm seeing I'm seeing like stones in a vision one two three four five and I'm seeing like a strange fire these are representations of altars listen there are families that have been covenanted to all kinds of ordinances fire is about to come from heaven right now in the name of Jesus, you are ready to shout now. Father, every family here that is under any kind of ordinance, I come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let fire from heaven liberate that family right now. One, two, three. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. We blot out handwritings. We blot out handwritings. Bring them out. I cause altars, yokes of darkness, ordinances, speaking against the people of God. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Hey. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah, 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 Yahweh. Oh yeah, yeah, say. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God go to the eastern states the eastern states right now God is bringing deliverance the east Abia Anambra state Enugu state Epoi state I'm seeing an anointing right now rest on people within that state let there be liberty right now let there be liberty right now you belong to that state the power of God is coming upon you right now right now even the lawful captives shall be delivered it's a sign and a wonder how God does it I'm seeing the map the east God is bringing liberty hallelujah the Lord is showing me the map again I'm seeing an arrow and I'm seeing it go to Benway Benway state right now I stretch my hands Benway Benway that anointing you are from that state any ordinance tying your destiny must let you go right now must let you go right now this is by the authority of the kingdom Benway state Benway state liberation right now in the name of Jesus Christ release their destinies right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah I'm seeing fire just within this circumference in front there are two families God wants to set free right now within this circumference I'm seeing fire coming upon them right now bring them out right now by the spirit of grace in the name of Jesus the son of the living God things must change in your life my friend this young man lift your hands where you are there is oil being poured on your head right now 
right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is removing something that looks like an arrow from your head let it go right now in the name of Jesus Christ let him go now oh yeah yeah oh yeah Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Fire is still falling here. I'm seeing this deliverance is especially for women. An entity comes to molest you in the night. You go to bed and a strange spirit just comes. Right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord is asking me to just count two. And at the count of two, that fire is coming on people right now. One, two. Let that fire come now. Liberation from ordinances of darkness. Every stranger that comes to manipulate your destiny. Be free now. All those in front here, I decree. The power that holds you. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, go. Leave them now. Release their destinies right now. Let there be restoration. Everything that has been stolen from hell, I command a restoration by the spirit of the living God, by the spirit of grace. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything that must leave your life, insist it must leave your life now. The angel of the Lord is removing arrows i'm seeing arrows arrows coming out of people that's what i'm seeing arrows 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 right now right here arrows arrows go now arrows are being removed out of people in the name of jesus madam be free right now be set free now the Lord is setting someone free here right now. Someone in this room. I'm seeing fire just resting on someone. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus, everything that has held you bound, be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, those outside keep praying. Something is resting upon you right now. The Lord asked me to come to overflow one. I want to pray for you. There is an anointing right now. I stretch my hands, fire from the front to the back. Everyone under any kind of yoke right now as I'm passing, be free. Be free, help them please. Out now, release their destinies. Release their destinies now. Please help them. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. That yoke must let you go now. That yoke must let you go now. I'm passing this road right now. Once I pass you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is taking everything that is not of God. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Let that fire rest upon you right now. Everything that has refused to open. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Close doors. Be open now. Be open now. Now listen, overflow two. I may not touch you, but in the name of Jesus, I pass your robe. Except God is not God. If there is anything sitting on your destiny, it must let you go. Right now, be free. Be free. I bring you the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. Open up your gates. Your gates. Gates be open. Destiny be open now. Be open in the name of Jesus. 
be open now in the name of Jesus be open in the name of Jesus be open in the name of Jesus fire is resting on this road just right there I'm seeing someone the oppression of your family is coming to an end right now I stand by this grace please anyone here anything that is not of God sitting on your destiny right now at the count of three all of you just I'm seeing fire right now and I'm seeing chains broken from people's legs right now be be set free now be set free now be set free now be set free now there is a lady here God is saying it is over right now I'm seeing an anointing liberating a lady's family right now help them please whether you're an usher or not please if anybody's falling close to you so they don't injure themselves hallelujah please shift that lady be free now I'm pointing my hands to her I command that devil to leave your family and your destiny now in the name of Jesus Christ begin to pray begin to pray overflow three pray pray overflow three something is about to release your destiny now something is about to release your destiny now something is about to release your destiny now overflow three I came with an anointing at the count of three shout Jesus fire is falling from the top to the bottom one two three go 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 now every yoke every altar be free now bring them out whether you are an usher or not bring them out every oppression of darkness right to the back I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit be free now be free now bring them out I'm seeing all kinds of spirits I command every spirit that is not of the Christ release God's people right now at the count of three I'm seeing fire resting on people and I'm seeing a number 41 41 people at the count of three shout Jesus are you ready one two three shout Jesus right now be free by the fire of the Holy Ghost be free right now every door that has refused to open I open that door right now in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. There are 27 people here. The grace for speed is coming upon them. I don't know who you are, but right now, the grace for speed, I stand by the anointing from the front to the back. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that anointing right now speed i release speed over your life over your destiny receive speed in the name of jesus speed in the name of Je hallelujah overflow three hear me there are people here the lord is telling me no one rises in your family when they get to a level something brings them bow and the lord is saying i should shift you by prophecy i stand right now i don't know where they are but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you right now in the name of Jesus I'm seeing the number 17 Lord I don't know where they are here but in the name of Jesus I declare move to the next level right now I shift you to the next level right now I shift you to the next level right now hallelujah I'm looking at 14 people here you have the call of God upon your life and right now the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to locate you 14 people Lord where are they I stretch my hands right now 
apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, Deborahs. Lord, where are they? Let that man to locate you now. The call of destiny that is upon you. Oh, prophet of God, may that fire find you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are 15 people here. Overflow three. The spirit of revelation is coming on you. Unusual insight. I don't know where they are. But right now I'm seeing light. Not fire. Light. Light coming on people. 15 people. Step into a new dimension of the revelatory grace. Right now in the name of Jesus. Yahweh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Main auditorium, please lift your hands. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing seven people. Main auditorium, lift your hands. I'm seeing seven people. The grace for speed. I'll pray it on everybody. But the main auditorium, there is a grace for unusual speed on seven people. They will begin to run by the anointing right now. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. Main auditorium, I stretch my hands. At the count of three, like Elijah, may that grace come. One, two, three. Receive that grace right now. In the main auditorium, step into the anointing for speed. In the name of Jesus. Overflow three, lift your hands. Every door that has refused to open over your ministry, over your life, held down by witchcraft, in the name that is above all names, at the count of three, I'm seeing doors open in the spirit. One, two, three, let that door be open now. Be open now. Be open now. The Lord wants to avert death over a family. This year alone, between last year and this year, four people have died in your family. Four people have died. And in the name of Jesus Christ, an anointing is coming upon you right now. Let death be averted now in the name of Jesus. Now listen, all of you at Overflow 3, and the extension there whatever must live your life as i'm passing this place please i am releasing my faith open your mouth now and declare lord it must live my life now go ahead go ahead pray please all those in front here the spirit that ties your destiny i command at the count of three let them go now one two three go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies make sure you are praying make sure you are praying the power of God is resting on someone here there's an anointing coming on someone right here in the name of Jesus there's an anointing coming on someone here and the Lord is saying it comes to an end that family crisis comes to an end. The power of God is resting on someone by my left here. Right now, receive that anointing. Let it go in Jesus' name. Be free right now in Jesus' name. The power of God is resting on someone here. Right here, I'm seeing an anointing. Right now. It's a prophetic grace. There's someone here, a prophetic grace is coming upon you. Right now, by my left here. In the name of Jesus, drink of that anointing. Drink of that fountain. May that grace rest upon your life. Right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord says it is over. Over right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at me my friend. The Lord is taking you to a height and a dimension in the spirit. I lay my hands on you. Drink of that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
I'm seeing what looks like smoke, just this region where, I'm, where you're looking at me. Right now, there are four people. I'm seeing the power of God, like a wind, just coming on them, just this road. Right now, Lord, where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Right now, the power of the Holy Ghost is coming on those people and the Lord is saying it is over. He's taking away captivity, four of you, by the Spirit of grace. Let it be over right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is a family here. Marriage does not happen in that family. But I'm seeing fire rest right now. The embargo is being broken now. The embargo is being broken. Whoever those people are, an anointing is coming on you now. For the sake of your family, that yoke of marital delay is breaking right now. Is breaking right now in the name of Jesus please lift your voice and pray everybody pray in the spirit pray in the spirit there is one of you among those standing here there is a call of God upon your life an anointing is coming upon you you will be mightily used by God where is that person spirit of the living God the hand of God just near the gate here the power of God is coming upon that person right now a new dimension in the spirit the eyes that see and the ears that hear may you step into that level in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ my friend touch this gentleman for me lift your hands I stretch my hands over you I command I'm seeing chains all over your body I command those chains to give way now in the name of Jesus release him now let him go now by the power of the Holy Ghost I cut those chains I'm seeing chains from your head to your toe let me pray for those here please all of you are here I'm, the Lord is opening my eyes and from here to the fence I'm seeing snakes and I'm seeing five people there is a major deliverance that is coming for a family right now in the name of Jesus may the anointing of the Holy Spirit locate those ones now five of you right now these spirits my God my God I'm seeing something living right now release them now release no matter how long release them now it is written that even the lawful captives shall be delivered i declare emancipation now by the spirit of the living god oh. where are you coming from huh? you are a gala i want to pray for you are you alone if you came here alone what do you do I want to pray for you the spirit of death is upon you and the Lord is saying I should pray for you so that those dreams you used to have seeing dead people is that true you have dreams and Too much, yes. the Lord is saying that you are going to be free from it right now I declare in the name of Jesus by the power of the hope in the there is there is someone here Hi. academic delay over your family is breaking right now I just please don't be carried away acting this thing I shunnedly to help people experience God I'm praying I don't know where that family is but I'm scattered in this congregation I stretch my hands let the anointing of the Holy Spirit family right now I'm seeing a family here none of you has a job none of you there are even a few graduates but nobody at all it's like the doors of jobs don't open. Right now, you're going to sense fire come up in your hands. Real physical fire. And the Lord is saying, by that, help them. By that, that embargo is broken. Lord, I, I declare right now, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon those people and bring emancipation. Everyone lift your voice and begin to pray in the Spirit. Please begin to pray in the Spirit. Don't say you are not inside. God can locate you from any direction. God can locate you from any direction. Bring me this lady, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, delay ends in your life. I stretch my hands and I pray. Delay, help her. The Lord is taking away witchcraft from this family. I command that devil, go now. See, it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. Just release your faith. In the name of Jesus, be free right now. Be free right now. My friend, the call of God is upon your life there is, that is coming upon you it's a healing anointing I stretch my hands may that grace begin to work 
effectually now step into that grace in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now listen among all of you from here to here the grace for speed is coming on two people listen those two people will start running now please hold them hold them so they don't enjoy themselves that anointing right now all across two you can't control yourself hold them please whether you're an usher or I release that grace speed two people strange speed God is ending delay right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing two of you a prophetic anointing you are not prophets but you have been desiring this grace the grace to see from here right to where that lady with the veil is I don't know where they are but I stretch my hands may that anointing find you right now accuracy of sight and help them help them please help them please in the name of Jesus Christ name of Jesus Christ of Jesus Christ an angel of the Lord is taking away reproach there is a family here the Lord is saying the captivity ends now an anointing is coming upon you right now it's now in the name of Jesus someone here is it your sister has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb who is that listen where where is she at home yes. what of you come how long who has had three miscarriages three miscarriages go and tell her she will have a baby girl that the Lord is giving her a baby girl in the name of Jesus I pray for you both in the name of Jesus let it come to an end right now let that captivity come to an end in the name of Jesus there's someone here your family has a court case who is that please court case don't make sure you don't tell us please they want to kill you because of what what did you do what did you do hold on I have to where are you from where is that I have to pray for you you have bad friends hold on let me talk to you eh? you have very bad friends bad friends you need to be delivered this is not even your whole life eh? you know what I'm saying right you need to repent eh? listen when I make an altar call run and come because the real salvation is you it's not the issue of court case of this you you have friends that are criminals and we have to pray you hear what I'm saying God is locating you to help you listen let me tell you my dear people I mean when God locates us like this is because he wants to help hey, there's somebody here your name is Sarah where is that person Sarah hold on please don't don't let me just prophesy I, I my heart is full God wants to visit people stand up who is Sarah where are you from huh where are you from no no where state of origin I want to pray for you who is Godia yeah Godia the Lord wants to visit you right now acting God truly wants to change your life yeah? I want to pray for you whose mother is in the hospital I'm seeing someone's mother lying down in the hospital here your mom come I'm seeing lying down in Portacot Port, uh, yes I Portacot you came from Portacot yes. go on I'm going to pray for do I know you I've never seen you I want to pray for you God is turning your situation up. Is, as you are standing let your heart be open your people may be far don't ever think I'm just because I come outside like this to encourage you 
to let you know that you must not make it inside anywhere. Are we together? The power of God is going to come upon you. A loud shout. That will be the person I'll prophesy to right now in just those outside here. It's not something you can stand. This is a sign and a wonder from the Spirit of God. That's not the shout. The shout is coming. It's a loud shout. Please bring the person when that happens. That's the shout. Bring the person. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, lift your hands. Jesus, come. Do you? What are you doing? What do you do? Of God, your own church, you are assisting someone. You came here not just to receive a miracle for your mother, but you came to take fire. Stand up. Why you came? Listen to me. You are going to go back and you will step into a dimension of signs and wonders that will surprise you. Sarah, in the name that is above all names, every oppression over your family, I come against it right now. I'm still hearing that name, Godia. Who is that? Hold on, please. Hold on. Where are you from? Huh? You are from Kat Saminaka. Hold on, please. Your sister. Blood sister. Same father, same mother. You've been praying for God to locate you. It's okay. You. Hi. The spirit of death is over your family. Huh? That's what I'm saying. I'm seeing you dreaming and dreaming of dead people. They will come and they are calling you. Sometimes they are saying you should eat together. This is the spirit of death coming on the family. But in the name of Jesus, I use them as a point of contact. If there is anybody under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is coming upon you. Help her. I caught spirit now. Name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family. Money does not stay in your house. No matter what happens. Once resources enter. You love God. But resources. Something must happen. Either sickness. Or they will steal it. Or something will come up. I'm seeing what looks like a blue flame and it's resting on at least five people and the Lord is saying an end comes to financial hardship. Father, where are they? Right now, I stretch my hands. Let that anointing locate you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and begin to pray. My friend, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. An end comes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your voice and pray in the spirit, everyone. My dear, look at me. I command that spirit to leave you now. Of darkness must let you go in Jesus' name. Lift your voice and pray, everyone. Please pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Please pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, everyone. Madam, help this woman so that she doesn't fall with it. I command everything that is not of God to let you go now. Release this woman's destiny now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oppression leaves right now. Someone here, there is a spirit that has oppressed your family. It must go now. I command that devil of darkness, help her please. That spirit must leave now. In the name of Jesus. Please everyone pray in the spirit. Everyone pray in the spirit. God is visiting us right now. One media person here, there is an anointing resting on someone. The Lord is bringing to end the captivity on your family. I'm seeing it by the Spirit of God. Captivity coming to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, let it end now. By the Spirit of the living God. Let it end now in the name of Jesus. My friend, I'm seeing what, what looks like a towel on you. And the Lord is wiping away infirmity. In the name of Jesus. Infirmity. Let it go right now. Please make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. The spirit of death. There is a family here. That spirit must go now. 
the spirit of death release them now in the name of Jesus release them now release them now the spirit of death there will be no obituary I command that devil to go now madam excuse me madam look at me come are you a man of God come you too please come I don't know you where are you coming from sir where do you what do you have to do with Adamawa is it Anambra huh? who is from Anambra me from Anambra state you came all the way ah. there is a grace to see that God is going to be delivering to you number two there is speed in ministry that God, I don't know you, sir. I've not seen you. You're, you're together. You're a man of God, too. You're a man of God. You're a ministry. Can I pray for you, sir? Because I'm seeing this anointing, strange anointing come on you. You will go back and it's going to be fire all the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. Step into that grace in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will never be the same. Can I pray for you, sir? By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, drink of this wine, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Mommy, let me pray for you. Hold on, please. Please stand up. Stand up. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. 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 The Lord is visiting. The Jennifer I'm seeing, you are outside. You are holding a child. Jennifer. Jennifer, is there someone like that? Oh, please oh, confirm. I, what's your name? They always confirm before you allow Jennifer, them. Sir. Jennifer, is this your child? Yes, sir. Where are you coming from? From this is my state. Huh? From GRE. No, no, where, where are you coming? Kaduna State. Kaduna State. Yes. I want to pray for you. So that the spirit that makes marriages to not work in your family will not catch up with you. Does Amen. it make sense what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Well, this boy has a great destiny. Forget about whatever it is that has happened or not happened. I want to pray for you. The Lord located you to bless you. What's his name? Fortune. 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 Yes, I will pray for you. Mama, where are you coming from? I came from Togo. You came from Togo? Yes, just yesterday. Just yesterday? Yes. What are you trusting God for? Ah, my daughter in America. She's one that sent me to you. She has been seeing you in her dream. You have done so many things for her in the dream. Then she said that I must come. So that show me you will locate her. She's asking for contract. That is contract that she's seeking for. She... Just calm down, madam. You came all the way from Togo. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what God will do in your life. First, not even just your daughter. Eh? Leave your daughter's issue. God is going to bring your daughter. But it's you. First, that back pain. Jesus. Huh? That back pain that you have. You get up in the morning and there's severe back pain. That back pain will leave you now. That's number one. Number two, the dead people you see in your dream. Eh? Sometimes you go to bed and you see dead people, people who have died, but they are alive talking to you. I need to pray for you. And then number three, God is going to visit your daughter. Tell her the month of August is a month of breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, be free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here, please? You are a teacher. Did you apply for a job? Yes. Where? Uh, uh, Dambo International. Because I'm seeing a letter and I'm seeing congratulations. It, hold on. Ah, you are a teacher. Yes, sir. Where? With uh, KHMS. What is Dambo International? It's a school. Did I you know. apply there? Yes. Like I'm seeing that they are going to give you a job. Ah. Huh? I will pray for you sir because this teaching you are doing is only for a while there is a grace of entrepreneurship upon you and that grace is going to come and God will shift you to a dimension in the name of Jesus Christ how many children do you have one. just one yes, sir. I have one outside no hold on don't be embarrassed eh? 
I'm seeing one child, then the vision changes and I'm seeing two again. Huh? You have one, you have two. What is the mystery? Explain. Before I married her, I have a son outside. Okay, before you married her, you have a child. The, yes, sir. Okay, I want to pray. Don't, don't make sure you treat the child with honor and grace. All the children that came out from you are great children. You understand? Please don't fight that child, eh? Madam, you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. I know that we live in a, a society that sometimes all kinds of troubles can come, but may God grant you the grace to manage things well. Sir, there is a grace of wealth that is upon you. Please look at me. It looks like you are a teacher, but your destiny is not a teacher. You are a real kingdom financier, and there is a grace for finances that should come upon you. Please look at me. You see this woman? She's a good woman. Don't ever let the devil use the face of any devil and use her face to make it look as if this is an evil woman. And don't let any prophet anywhere tell you this woman is a witch. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, God gave you a good woman. She's a good woman. Madam, you're a good woman. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you, sir. Please hold my hands. In the name that is above all names, I open up every closed door over your life and destiny. I shift you to that realm of wealth in Jesus' name. The person, look up, please. The person who comes to molest you when you sleep, it comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus, every fraternity with darkness is gone now and gone forever. In the name of Jesus. I don't know why, why are they here. Who is Sarah? Are you married? We are not more together. Huh? I have two children, but we are not together with you. You are father. not together with your husband? Yes. Were you married? No. This is what I'm saying. Come. You need to be delivered, eh? If not, I'm seeing four children. You will add two more, and yet you are not married. I'm not, I hope you are not feeling bad. I hope you are not embarrassed. God reveals so that He can redeem, eh? You are not a bad woman. You are not an immoral woman. It's a spirit. You hear what I'm saying? Come, let me pray for you. Aye. The power of God is coming on one of you here. One of you standing here now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on one right now. It's not something you can resist. I'm, this, I'm seeing it in the spirit that the power of God is going to come upon one of you. And when that happens, then I'm going to prophesy to that one person. Right now, it's an anointing from heaven that is coming upon one of you here. And the Lord is saying that he's taking away sickness from the midst of you. Taking away sickness. My dear, in the name of Jesus, is it the same man that has the children? Yes. Huh? Yes. Why doesn't he want to marry you? He didn't pay for my dowry. He didn't pay for your dowry? Yes. Um, Go and tell him that I said he should pay for your dowry. Huh? Dowry is not building project. He should pay for your dowry and give these children a chance. Please. At this level, it's no longer about their comfort. The children need a father. May God grant him grace and give him money to pay your dowry and be a good man in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing written in the air, polygamy. God is breaking that spirit now. No, no, no. Just please, just keep quiet. I'm ministering. There is a spirit of polygamy. Everybody in that family, you can't do with one man alone or one woman alone. That anointing is locating people right now to break the spirit. It's a covenant. It's not a desire. Coincidences continue to put themselves together to lead people to trouble. Right now, that spirit, please help them. In the name of Jesus, inside, outside, everywhere, the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. The spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. Sir, let me pray for you. Where are you coming from, sir? But God, what do you do? Do business. You do business. But things are not going well. Huh? If I don't pray for you, I'm seeing you in the court because of money, debt. Huh? I hope you're not embarrassed. You came here so that I pray for you. What are you trusting God for? I'm trusting God for breakthrough in my business. Breakthrough in your business. First, your... My wife, um, I've listened to your tape for about seven days now. And the last dream she had, you came to pray for her. I said, sister, that you come through the night today 
I will pray for you. More than business breakthrough, sir, is your relationship with God. Do you understand? Please don't be embarrassed, but your relationship with God. In this kingdom, we prosper as our souls prosper, not at the detriment of our soul. So that there's, there's too much spiritual distraction around your life. I pray that God will cause your hearts to love him more than money in the name of Jesus. And that in so doing, he will bless you and lift you. I decree and declare, I don't know why all of you came, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that everything that is not of God leaves you right now. Where is this lady from? Come, where are you from? I'm from Nesara Ostage. You are from where? Nesara. How many are you? I'm from extended family. We are many. many you are plenty. Yes. You don't know how many. Yes, but oh. in my mother's side, we are eight. Two have gone. We are six now. Are you married? No. The man coming around your life, I drive him from your life now and forever. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. The man that I'm seeing, I drive him in the name of Jesus, the son Amen. of the living God. You will go back and you'll be surprised. He will tell you there's no time. He cannot call you. He's busy. Just know that God drove him from your life to save you from trouble. Are you ready for a child now? Tom, you have to be careful. Huh? I send him again in the name of Jesus Christ before he destroys your innocent life. What do you do? I'm Lenny Salom. Huh? I'm Lenny Salom. You are, I'm not here. I'm Lenny Salom. Hairdressing. Yes, sir. I'll have to pray for you. Come. Huh? I place favor on your life in the name of Jesus. May the Lord help you in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but the Lord is showing me a very serious vision. I'm looking at people, but I'm not seeing a face. And this is not the first time I see this kinds of vision. The moment I see this kind of things is a sign that, you know, the devil has just tried to tarnish the glory of people. The Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of. There, there is a way that you are good, but it's like people continue to misunderstand you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands. I'm seeing an anointing coming on those people. That veil that covers your face, always putting you in trouble. I tear off that veil now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now, please listen very carefully. God is touching everyone, every single one under the sound of my voice. Three things will happen right now. Number one, make sure you are here with your prayer request. If you are not here with it, please pen down. It's an act of faith very quickly. What you're trusting God for, lift it up. Let the ushers have it. Number two, we're going to minister to the sick right now. We'll do it very, very fast. And then I'll pray on it and we'll prophesy open doors for everyone. We have to make this very, very fast. Are we together? While you are doing that, please be praying in the spirit. There are people here who are trusting God for themselves and their families. Please listen. Let's listen outside, inside. Let's listen to the instruction. Please. All those who are standing trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, I want to pray for you myself. Are we together? particularly for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Um, but then aside from that, um, overflow one, please listen, listen. From the start of overflow two, that means the end of CGC, and inside here, that's overflow two. Um, overflow three is from the end of CGC down to second equa. Okay, you are overflow two B. Let's call it 2B. Are we together? Then the overflow from the beginning of this fence, down, right down there, we'll call you overflow 2C. Please listen. Then there's overflow 3. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. This is the main auditorium. This is overflow 1. This is overflow 2. Then from this place down to second equis overflow 2B from that same place down is overflow 2c so that so that you would know if you are trusting god no matter what overflow for the fruit of the womb i'll pray for you but then all who are in here overflow one i mean overflow here please you're trusting god for healing come stand here overflow one come and stand in front of your projector stand overflow two 
stand in front of your projector stand overflow 2a please create a space for them there overflow 2a create a space for them there and then overflow 2c stand in front of your projector stand and then overflow 3 you can stand in um, in front of your projector stand those online connect by faith and then we'll pray we'll pray with you we're going to do this very fast we thank god there are many hands today and while they minister to you i would like you to believe god for a miracle you are a man of god you are a ministry here open up your heart and connect you are trusting god for the grace for signs wonders make sure that you connect the worship team will be leading us through powerful sessions of worship while we do that and concurrently while that is happening please make sure you submit your prayer request everyone make sure you pen down your prayer request and then we are going to pray on it and let the god of heaven visit us right now in the name of jesus praise the lord um a jimmy and promise and bishop manasseh a jimmy and promise and bishop manasseh will do overflow three there are quite a number of people there overflow three um benga will do overflow two overflow two pastor alpha and ima you do overflow one um overflow one we need a way of reaching overflow kenny kenny will do overflow to be overflow to be will do overflow to be and then isaac isaac in media you do overflow to see let's make it that way praise the lord father we stand under this corporate grace and we decree and declare in the name of jesus that as we minister to everyone across let your healing power touch deliver set free in the name of jesus do this and be glorified even by the power of the holy spirit please we'll do it very very fast and while you are seated make sure you are agreeing releasing your faith in the name of jesus madam you lift lift your hands you this woman no the one wearing blue and white yes lift your hand i'm seeing oil coming on your head and the lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's lifting you this is what i'm seeing an anointing is coming on you right now and the lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's bringing an oil of gladness upon your life in the name of jesus father let there be miracles signs wonders in the name of jesus christ amen let's stretch your hands to the prayer request begin to pray in the spirit lord you are the god that answers prayers i decree and declare in the name of jesus pray over these requests he said these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever there is a covenant of answered prayer in this place lift your voice and pray father i decree and i declare i prophesy i proclaim by the spirit of grace that this is a representation of the pain of people a representation of their hunger when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion are you praying decree and declare that everything written here in the name of Jesus will become a testimony everything written here we invoke the power of the Holy Ghost upon every request here supernatural deliveries terminations of delay open doors new spiritual dimensions in the name of Jesus admissions graduations jobs marriages children restoration advancement promotion in the name that is above all names we decree and declare make sure you are praying make your declaration this that are brought before the god of all flesh will never 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 return as a disappointment i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit those online joining us from all over the world connect in the name of jesus 
from America to Asia, the UK, Canada, everywhere, we decree and declare that your requests are turned into testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I want you to understand that this is not a ritual. This is a mystery. Are we together now? There are all kinds of testimonies that have come. I can prophesy and there is so much. I can be limited. I cannot discern everybody's expectation. But this is a representation of your hunger. It's a representation of your tears. And let me tell you this. Please don't get familiar with this. This is not some, some spiritual thing just for the fun of it. There is power in what we are doing. It's guided by understanding. It's guided by an anointing. And God has a covenant. He's protected by his jealousy. In the name of Jesus, Paul said, For this cause I, Paul, bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may grant unto you. In the name of Jesus, I declare upon you that the Egyptians you see today, that you will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus, every request here that is a death sentence cancer hiv and any kind of incurable disease we turn it around right now in the name of jesus every impossible situation represented here may the god of wonders arise tonight in the name of jesus and do wonders by the power of the holy ghost for those of you who have submitted these requests on behalf of your loved ones I declare may the angel of God's presence these angels that do not know time and distance may they go to your various homes and to your loved ones and birth supernatural solutions in the name of Jesus Christ we decree and declare that you remain above this challenge forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare over your life, we are entering the second half of the year. It says, revive thy work, O God, in the midst of the year. I decree and declare, every spiritual weariness, every prayerlessness, it dies right now in the name of Jesus. Passion for the things of the spirit like never before. Hunger for spiritual things in the name of Jesus. I declare prayer fire like never before. Let it rest upon your life now. I decree and declare an appetite for God and the things of God. I declare you receive it right now. I pray over your life. Every long-standing issue, you have prayed, you have fasted, you have sought counsel, it has refused to change. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, by this time next month, return with your testimony. By this time next month, return with your testimony. Please believe it, don't just shout amen, believe it. I come against patterns. You have seen it in others. You saw it in your father. You saw it in your loved ones. You saw it in your siblings. Now it's beginning to happen. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I cancel every pattern now. I cancel every pattern now. It works for everybody until it gets to your turn. Then something happens. You will see it, but you never possess it. I declare right now, that spirit that makes you to see things and never step into it is caused by the God of heaven. Caused by the God of heaven. Everything that was given to you in the realm of the spirit already, I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, this month coming, it must enter your hands. I declare that it must enter your hands. There are families where is the women that feed the men? 
Have you seen such families? No matter how hardworking the men are, they never feed the family. They get up in the morning and play draft from morning till night while the women go to fend. It's an anomaly. I declare by the Spirit of God, I'm praying for the men now, the grace for establishment and the grace to be satisfied early. Receive that anointing right now. It says, satisfy me early. I'm saying it again. Everybody here who is a man, and it looks like the devil wants you to depend on people for the rest of your life. I decree and declare, like Jacob, Laban must let you go in the name of Jesus. I pray for every Mordecai here. You have been good to others. You have been good to kings. Your records have been written, but you have not been rewarded. In this season, by the Spirit of God, we open a book of remembrance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Anyone here called jobless by the God of heaven, between now and the next three months, like the ark of God in the house of Obed-Edom, I decree and declare jobs that will be consolations to your years of pain. May my God give it to you. Every dying business, hear the word of the Lord. I don't care what has happened. By the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, I speak to you. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Everyone who is in ministry here, no matter what level there are dimensions, I pray for you. You will go back to your various churches, fellowships, and assemblies, and a dimension of fire, a dimension of insight you have never seen, receive in the name of Jesus. Everyone here called barren by the God of heaven, in the name of Jesus, according to the time of life, Return with your children. These are not empty prophecies. Believe them. They are backed up by the jealousy of God. They will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. I don't know where the helpers of your destiny are. But in the name of Jesus. Every man who must arise in this season for your sake. To favor you. Wherever they are around this globe, by the spirit of grace, I call them to your life now. I call them to your life now. The Bible says that strangers shall feed your flock. It says your gates shall be open continually. It shall not be shut day nor night. That you will receive the forces of the Gentiles. People you do not know. I compel them to be interested in your lifting. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prayed a prayer like this one time. And one of us, God just opened a door. And a bank met him to sell a property for them worth 450 million naira. Listen, it doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. There is the creative dimension of prophecy that can order things in your life. Every area of struggle. I stand by the God of heaven who is called Ebenezer, the God of Jeshurun. In the name of Jesus, receive help from the Lord. I want to pray for people who have ideas and have projects but it seems to never go out of the book you have ideas you have projects it's just to connect you with somebody who has the interest nobody helps you on their own they are called by prophecy in the name of Jesus right now I connect your ideas to your helpers 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I forgot to pray for those who are in the various institutions writing their exams. I know that many people had started their exams. Some have written. And the honest truth is that some of you have written nonsense. You need the mercy of God in the name that is above all names. Much more than what you have written in the name of Jesus. May the mercy of God show up in your exam. There is a dimension of finances that comes by prophecy. Please pay attention. Our time is gone, but I want to speak this into your life. There are people who are not very smart. The prophetic dimension is not a license to not be valuable. The prophetic dimension is a system of advantage to bridge tragedy while you learn. It's a system of God's mercy. It would be foolish to believe that wealth is only by principles. There are laws and there are irrefutable principles that make for the foundation. But there is the ordinance of prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the God who has helped me by His grace, the God who has helped this ministry, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit between now and the end of July may your finances turn around in a way that will surprise you may your finances turn around in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are under any kind of project building project whatever it is the hand that started that project is the same hand that must finish that project in the name of Jesus Christ everyone here due for promotion but has been kept because of the wickedness and the sentiments of men go back into your next level in the mighty name of Jesus Christ finally I want to pray for you honor is the ability to discern to celebrate and to reward a man for his uniqueness it's not enough for your value to be discerned you must live a rewarded life you will be frustrated if you do not live a rewarded life i pray for you the eyes that can perceive and can discern your value i connect you to those eyes in the name of jesus Any pit you have found yourself in, I must pray this. Financially, whatever it is, you have found yourself in a situation where only God can bring you out. May that God you believe in bring you out of it now. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I want to prophesy again the grace for this year's prophetic word. The Lord declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Every part of that prophecy that is yet to speak in your life, by the force of right words and by the power of the, no, the name that is above all names, I declare to you, may your life experience extraordinary fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ may you return with testimonies some of you this night before you get to your homes your phones you will see text messages that are full of wonders in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you all the praise we bless you because you have honored this house you have made it a place of answers you have made it a place of strange testimonies. Let everything that you have done tonight by your spirit return as testimonies. Let it not just be a ceremony. In the name of Jesus, we declare by the spirit of the Christ, testimonies 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, very quickly, I will make an altar call and then we'll take a few very important announcements and we're done. I apologize, our time is gone. You are here in this place. Please, let's minimize movement, especially outside. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've not given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to encounter his salvation and his mercy. Please listen. Or you are here, you are saying, man of God, I've seen the wonders. I once gave my heart to the Lord. But as it is right now, I need mercy. I need grace. I need to start afresh. You are here inside overflow one, two, three, and all the other annexes. I want to give you five minutes. You want to make it right with Jesus wherever you are. I want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand right here. It will be my joy to lead you to Jesus Christ. Don't wait for someone. Be the first. I'll count one to five wherever you are. Please start running. Clear the way for them, please. Outside. One. Quickly. Quickly, please. If you're coming, run quickly. Run to Jesus. Two. Win that war today. Win that war today. Win that war today. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Three, someone is still coming. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. I expect people to come from outside. Please clear the way for those coming from outside. Clear the way for those coming from outside. Overflow one, two, three. If you're coming, don't be sluggish. Run very quickly. We're out of time. Run quickly, run quickly. We're out of time. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed and afraid of my colleagues and contemporaries. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Give them a big God bless you whilst they come. Takes a lot of courage, but win that war. Young and old, run to Jesus. The Bible says, ye must be born again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to salute all of you. Thank you so much for coming to make this decision. Lift your right hand high to heaven and say this after me. You're not reciting a poem. This is from the depth of your heart. Jesus is here. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I have seen your wonders and I declare that I need you. This night, I declare that you are my Lord, you are my Savior, you are my King. I receive your life, I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. I am a child of God, I'm changed forever. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, I present to you the ones you died for i thank you because when you hung on that cross they were worth your blood they were worth the tears they were worth the death i pray in the name of jesus according to scripture your sins are forgiven and the grace to walk in victory is released upon you right now in the name of jesus i decree and declare forever you go from glory to glory even by the spirit of god everything that is not of god i come against it right now the grace to live victorious is released upon you. From today, you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I congratulate you. I salute you. Very quickly, everyone in concert, I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. And you will have a few people just welcome you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.